GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi, Naomi Wildman. I was setting it up. Oh. Welcome to the G&T show, where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. As always, the beautiful, the lovely, the high-booted, short-skirted, and big-breasted Terry Lynn. <laughs> that would be me. Admiral Shaw. Badass. It's Serenium <laughs> Cup Day. <laughs> Good morning. It's Sunday on the G&T show. You know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early. It's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee class. <laughs> Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's going to get rough. Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt, my helmet, with the little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, we decided. <laughs> we were going to do the GNT show. Man. One of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set an expectation. Oh, That's the thing about the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news, and I figured this is out. Terry okay. having a series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it You're doesn't take long for this show to, to <laughs> deteriorate, does it? straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I G&T. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the G&T Show, episode 145. I'm Terry Lynn. And Joe Lon True, bitches. And uh, there she is, to my left, your right, wearing her suit with the big shoulder pads and neon colors uh, to, to, to have the same look as she did when we had our very first ass date in all those years ago. <laughs> Terry. That's me. And to my right, your left, here he is, the Klingon who thought revenge was a dish best served cold, till it was explained to him that meant getting back at someone. Seradium. Kabla. <laughs> you like that, Terry? I, that was cute. <laughs> well, I decided not to to pick on Mike because he is a lone wolf, you know, <laughs> for a Klingon. He, he also most knows. most people don't know this about Mike. He's a he's a lone wolf. Let me correct. He prides he himself on being a lone wolf. The first precept is choose your enemies well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Somebody got a buck. Yeah, somebody got a buck. And, and let me, you know what? Let me correct that about Mike. He does pride himself on being a lone wolf until it's time for the three-legged race at the annual GNT picnic. <laughs> I like the fact it took you a second. I did. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> Someone had time on his hands. <laughs> So I was actually kind of disturbed by the picture that Matthew Anderson posted, and apparently he's having a bad morning. <laughs> Poor Matthew Anderson. I mean, you've had a first. Uh, there's one I saw, and it's it's from an African nation, and I have no idea what it is. But it's have you ever been so mad that you hit a motherfucker with a cactus, and the dude is holding a giant cactus in his hand? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> oh, Matthew Anderson put a thing up that said how we eat breakfast in America, and it's yeah. got like a lot of bacon. A yeah, lot it's got of one bacon. egg, two pieces of toast, coffee, three, and a three huge pile of, of bacon. It's three so, pieces oh, of three toast. Oh, three pieces yeah. of toast. You're right. Like a pound of bacon, coffee, and a handgun. And a handgun. And that makes me laugh because this week in uh, – in work, in order to cheer myself up, I actually listened to last year's breakfast with G and T. Yeah. Oh God, Classic. I was laughing at again. <laughs> you hear, Mike? Mike gets his breakfast burrito that was amazingly huge, and it he goes, huge. his explanation: it's the size of a leg. <laughs> 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 and we all remembered Ben the waiter, but none of us remembered Mercy, the waitress. The waitress. Well, she yeah. was kind of. She was kind of. She was shy. She was very shy. I was going to say I didn't want to say ben was doing a, because it, she was just really sweet. Ben was ben doing was, shtick. Yeah, he was doing a show, uh, giving us a, a show, song and dance, right. almost. Right. Yeah, ben, ben was Hugh Jackman. If you ask him to sing, you know, he just. <sighs> and and Baz, that is the GNT annual picnic. It's breakfast in Las Vegas, so you will be invited because you will be there this year. No, no, please don't invite him. <laughs> <laughs> the table's already full. No, the table's full. God, lots of news this week for the for the con now. 
So we gotta. Did, so did, what did you guys do this week? Get, I mean, get, um, I know Michael's camera, been busy. Can camera three pan to the audience on, in the front row? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Terry, did you see who's with us today? I did. She's lovely. I know, looking very lovely in her, her, I guess because she joined us, she's in her toss blue uniform with her ears. The Love lovely her. Janice has Hi, Janice. Hey, you sit down, mister. What? <laughs> I'm just being polite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're a Klingon and you're polite. Something's not jiving. <laughs> we have a secret. Okay, that GIF was cute, Sensei. All. Yes, with Spock. Yeah, and the dog. That's very cute. Um, well, it was a kind of a crappy week, so I'm glad that it's over. Yeah, well, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I did not enjoy it. Uh, it was yesterday a short wasn't week, so bad because we were. Huh? Short week, but a crappy week. It felt it felt twice as long. Oh yeah, it did. Sitting in a lawyer's office felt like it took two days, but I can't yeah. really discuss that too much. Well, we ended up. <clears throat> it was just really busy. Our supervisor was off in Florida for a um, meeting with one of the tribes out there, and then unfortunately, there was a rather large weather system that went through Montana and North Dakota. You guys didn't see that tornado that. <laughs> through. the least, we're rather busy at the office right now, and um, uh, we were just, it was just four days of complete and utter, you know, busy hell, and then on top of it, you had those other meetings that you were supposed to, like, oh, you have to test this software, and oh, you have to do something else, and we were like, do you mind? We have priorities. It's called our jobs. <laughs> So the entire claims department was getting all bitchy because we were being told, well, you, you have to go on this half day thing. And we're like, no, we're not going on this half day thing. We're like, well, you have to be a team player. We're like, well, the team can come and help us handle claims. <laughs> It was really bad. It was just really bad. So to say the least, we were happy for the weekend to come by. And next week, I'm sure we'll be just as busy, but at least we will have had a breather. It was rough. Really? I'm, uh, I'm happy that uh, I'm, I like my team. I'm happy that the team is there. and They cracked me up. But dang, what a week. I, I'm Mikey, very what about sore. you? Um, you want Nick to explain why he's so sore first, or do you want to hear about my week? No, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. I'm going to look at this picture of Dr. Pulaski when she was young and hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's how his leg got sore. Just yeah. She was beautiful when she was young. That was Betty she White, did. who just turned 92. Okay, and let me just say this before Mike starts. Betty White's old. We get it. Enough with the sex jokes. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Se- sex jokes? Oh, my God. <laughs> she's always talking about getting laid. I love her. Good for her. I know. It's just it, she needs a new shtick. That one's worn out, so to speak. <laughs> she just set you up and you know it. I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, Mike. <laughs> well, I finished Fold Equations. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I, I don't know. I think I like the first book best. Really? I really dug that the whole. That was my movie. least favorite of the three. I really like the Noonien Sung angle yeah. and how he yeah. went through, you know, uh, he gave us his version of, 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 of history, so to speak. You, you, you literally saw it through his eyes. Yeah, I but really liked Dave that. Matt, I enjoyed all three tremendously. I don't want to die a violent, painful death again. <laughs> well, I, yes, I, I did enjoy all, all three books, but I think the Noonien Sung, Sung one was my favorite. I, yeah. For the other two, I kind of expected more data. I don't know why, but I expected more data. So I guess that that's why it, they didn't. Um, I mean, the stories were holy crap, amazing, but <laughs> but I don't know. I think I expected more data out of them. But huh. anyways, yeah, I guess that's fair. That. Yeah, that's fair. yeah, that's very fair. And then um, I re- started and finished the Klingon Art of War. Excellent. Uh, Let me just by say Keith that. R. A. De Sounds like I'll say in and out, in and out, and in oh, and thing. out. That's all I'm going to say about Sun Sail. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and what else? The, and you started a third. Which one? Uh, I started reading um, Revelations in Dust from the Fall by... Oh, boy. I, I have David to say... David R. George III. David R. George III, yes. I have to say that the way that he pre- represented... The um the first episode or a section of that first episode of Deep Space Nine. Yeah. That had me in tears. Oh, it was so yeah. good. No, yeah. you didn't. You did not cry. I did. did. Oh, you're such a woman. I know him. He did. It was <laughs> you're good. You're not a Klingon. 
Yeah, he is. Klingons, dude. Yeah. They don't. They don't. They don't have tears. They don't like the Vulcan. They don't cry over literature. Oh, poetry, they do. Oh, you and don't. opera. Just telling you. We're very cultured. We're not the heathens <laughs> you think us to be. Oh God. But anyways, <laughs> um, you, I mean. As I was saying, the Keith book, it was wonderful, very informative. I, I'm, I definitely want to read it again just because there's so much there. And it's got a lot of history, both modern and ancient. Well worth, well worth it. Oh, guys, got to check it out if you haven't. And then, as I said, I'm also reading The, the Fall. I started that. And although I know... Um, what what kind of sort of happens in in the first book because you know um, I'm not looking forward to it because actually I do kind of like Man Bako. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Although I haven't read a lot with her, but yeah, the bits and pieces that I have, it's like I like her. I like her. She's funky. <laughs> She's, <laughs> She's amazeballs. Yeah. So amazeballs. Although I know what's coming, I'm not looking forward to it but yeah. i have to say that, that that first you know the that retelling of of ds9 i just blew me away um so yeah yep. Ch- definitely check I, it out i don't know if you saw the chat room captain on the bridge pf dennis good morning here. paul good to see uh, you good morning dennis in the chat room <clears throat> well let's get to some star trek news Shall Wait, we? how did nick yep. hurt himself thank you mike oh, terry does not you. pay attention to me i, I, I i've don't. come to that conclusion I talked more than normal, so I think I took up your time. <laughs> that's no, that's okay. It. You took some coke. You, you were doing lines of coke off of the hooker's tits earlier, so that's okay. <laughs> that's what the, the green wow. room is there for. <laughs> the green room is there for. No, I I traveled Friday. I, I traveled a couple of hours east and uh, went and visited the lovely, in front of the show, lovely Kelly Metting. And... Uh, we went and uh, she hadn't seen X Men: Days of Future Past, so I saw it a second time, and actually caught a bunch of things I missed on the first viewing, which is fun. But then uh, yesterday, the purpose of my trip was to go help her sister, the lovely Dawn Metting, move. So I was carrying furniture and 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 dressers and and heavy things up three flights of stairs. Ouch. Very nice. It was worth it, though. The medic, it's you know the lovely medic sisters. Yes. Right. That was sweet. Well, they're both very, very dear to me. So. Well, hi everybody. <laughs> hi, the Medin sisters. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, got an update <laughs> on how her her new trilogy's doing. So that was good. Oh, good. Yes, very excited. We we talked about really she needs a new agent, but um, talked about things with her her. Uh, her career and all of that. So it was a very good video. Because I, had, I haven't seen her since Farpoint. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh, we miss her. Was, I know, I know. She, well, she goes, she does, she, I had never noticed before. And we were in her kitchen and I was like, are those new? And I'm, and I'm pointing and she's got a whole bunch of hedgehog stuff. Like wicker hedgehogs and ceramic Aww. hedgehogs and everything. And she was like, no, they, I, I saw the and I started collecting. And I said, well, you know, it's very fitting, you the hedgehog, because they're all cute and cuddly. And then they wrap up in their protective shell. And she said that was a really good an- analogy of her. But when she starts writing, you know, she does go into her, her, her Kelly tunnel. Her, her hedgehog ball? Yes, her hedgehog ball. Aww. So. That's cute. I like it. What an yeah. analogy. But okay. Since well, I guess we can formally say here, Terry, we're going to. I'm going to try. We're going to shoot for a G and T booth at this year's Farpoint, and we. I Kelly said she would be more than happy to be our our celebrity guest there. Awesome. And I figured that's how we'll finally get her ass on the show. <laughs> She'll have no choice. <laughs> that's great. But that'll be good because her 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 trilogy will be coming out in Z book only. But right, it'll be That's a chance awesome, to get her. Though. Yeah, we love her. We love Kelly. Yeah, she her her legs were all bruised up from helping with the move. So she was like, oh. I, I was like, oh my god. I was like, just tell people that I visited. You had a really good weekend. She just hit me and called me a dork. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Andrew Wonders is here. Hello, Andrew. It's Andrew. a wonder to see you. 
<clears throat> and poor Andrew, I saw a post. There's that picture of Betty White. There's oh, she's always picture. been a looker, yes. Uh, she's so pretty. Um, uh, Andrew Wonders has been having some... Um, I, I felt bad he posted that he's been having issues with this computer that STO no longer... He can no longer play STO on oh my. his computer. Oh, my. Well, yeah, STO is a, uh, it's a, it's a hog, it's a hoggy game. It, it, it is. It takes up a lot of uh, memory, a lot of space, and it's freaking beautiful. So. so, oh, I meant to tell you, yesterday driving back, um, there was a thing on the news, and it said that for those that, that like to cook, especially in a certain way, um, because of droughts across Europe, there's going to be a global shortage of olive oil. So be does ready for that. Does not surprise me. Yeah, and, that does not surprise me. And when they said that, I thought, hmm. Uh, now I guess we all know how Popeye felt when his wife died. Oh, but I'm... thank you, thank you. So uh, bad. That one is dedicated to Sunset. All thank you. Oh, brother. Well, let's get to some Star Trek news. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll keep going. <laughs> Star Trek news. I am so proud to be a talkie geek. We've got our problems with the film, which we'll get into on our dopey little podcast and nitpick it to death. Star Trek news. So congratulations to the always dreamy David Mack. There's Legos. Um, yeah. Star Trek news. Yes, the story behind the story. The movie <laughs> that never was made. They got a Klingon. I know. Sold. That's right. I'm going to throw in a Buck Makai rookie guard. That's right. A Buck Makai for people. It doesn't get any bigger than Star Trek news. Let's start off. IO9 posted that it's, it's a, a wonderful video of James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Patrick Stewart, and yeah. Ian McKellen uh, doing interview, doing kind of interviewing each other. And, and <clears throat> Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen got their counterparts from X Men: Days of Future Past, Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy, to do impressions of them. Yeah, that was I saw that. Oh my! But God. what was so sweet was how I just. I was like, but James McAvoy, he he couldn't do the whole space, the intro to Star Trek. Yeah. Couldn't do it because he said he'd start to cry. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And we all know that I'm painfully hetero, but that Michael Fassbender could probably turn me. Yeah, he's he's, he's pretty, yeah. Yeah, He's a pretty man. He is a pretty man. I'll tell you. <laughs> and funny at the same time. So um, take a load. Take take a load off. <laughs> I know. Take- you know, it's funny that he's such such a – because the characters he usually portrays are so intense that to see him all light and, and airy is really a treat. Exactly. It's, it's like when you a- see Christian Bale doing something fun. Yeah, seeing Christian Bale smile yeah. without being paid to do so. <laughs> It's pretty cool. It does, it's not right. <laughs> yeah, it feels it, dirty somehow. It does feel dirty somehow. <laughs> uh, the next article ties together. I know a lot of us over the past of the past couple of weeks have seen this really cool Kickstarter video about um, solar streets. Have you seen the solar roadways? Yes, those are totally okay. cool. They're very fucking awesome. Well, I guess one of the reasons why we saw that Kickstarter at all was because George Takei tweeted it. And they've been able to go back and look as the reason why, first off, they met their goal. And, and it was largely due to the fact that George Takei tweeted the video and and got the video out there so people could actually see it. And it just goes to show, yeah, it just goes to show you how many great ideas die on the vine, not because they're not great ideas. It's because nobody never gets out. Yeah. Wow. um, Thank you. Thank you, George. That was, that was very, very cool. Speaking of videos, did you see LeVar Burton crying? We're, we're, I'm, I've already got it prepped up. All right. <laughs> I've okay. already got it set up. Um, <clears throat> and of course, we'll, we'll just talk about that right now. Um, many of you know that at the beginning of this week, it was just the middle of this week. Uh, it was Wednesday. It was. It was Wednesday. Because it was when we did the book club. Right. And it was the day that. Um, Shameless plug. <laughs> Maya Angelou died. Yeah. And. Well, that's because Baz stabbed her. Baz, damn it. Well, he thinks it's cute to be all stabby. Well, NPR picked up on it. Um, <clears throat> that day, Reading Rainbow established a $1 million Kickstarter 
in order to bring the Reading Rainbow program into classrooms, into schools, and get books into children's hands in the classroom. And this can be done mobile, Android, console. No. Uh, it, can only, it was only available on iPads. Or, or, yeah, I think it was only on iPads. Um, and the Kickstarter was to try to get it onto right. the Internet. Right, that's what and, I'm saying. Is that yeah. The Kickstarter was to bring it into that more global access. Yep. Across all platforms. Uh, across all platforms. Um, and that $1 million was reached in 12 hours. That's awesome. Crazy. The $2 million was reached in 36. Oh, they hit $2 million? They have 3.1 million so far. Wow. They have and, a five million dollar goal now. And now they have a stretch goal of five million dollars, which This is one bring, stretch goal that we know will it better we we've it talked better. about stretch goals and you know, hey, if you're gonna do this is one where keep adding boys. Yep, this exactly. one needs to make it. This one needs to make it. It'll bring free access of Reading Rainbow into seven thousand five hundred classrooms. It It'll hits mobile, in. Android, consoles, consoles and, and set-top boxes. Set-top boxes. Which, what is set-top boxes? That's new to me. Roku. Um, oh, okay. Okay. You no, know, all of those. You know, all of the the Apple TV. Yes. Oh, all of okay, those little cool. those little boxes that you can attach. Yeah, they, they, um, they make your smart TV or your regular TV smart. <laughs> it, the, they make things go. They, they make, make things, things go. go. That's right. <laughs> well, the the pledges, you guys, are actually really fun. And a lot of them are you can adopt a classroom. Uh, LeVar Burton will do a voicemail for you if you donate $400. Um, T-shirts, tote bags for the, the – for the, the smallest ones even get low. Cool gifts. Um, there's um, – you can do private meetings with LeVar Burton. Dinners and there's picnics and all kinds picnics, of fun. The, the picnic ones are actually pretty fun. You know, I thought, oh, a group picnic with LeVar Burton and, a, and so you and like 10 backers go on a picnic in LA. You have to get yourself there. But, you know, I thought that's really, that's really kind of fun. That video yeah. of him, though, when they reached 1 million. When they reached 1 million, he breaks yeah. down. And I did I put that? Yeah, I think I did. I put the, oh, I didn't put the, uh, here's the Kickstarter link. I'm putting it in the chat room. And of course it will be on our oh, the, Matthew Anderson the, beat me. The last, um, the last um, uh, uh, item that you know that you can I guess get. I think that's pretty awesome. The ten thousand dollar. Oh, the the visor. Yeah. <laughs> you get to put on Jordy's visor. That's pretty cute. <laughs> Did you see us? So you and a guest will join Lavar in Los Angeles for a private dinner. You get plenty of time to hang out, questions, get pictures, and more. You'll get the once-in-a-lifetime chance to take a photo or video while wearing Lavar's original visor. You also get two passes to the Star to a selected Star Trek or comic convention of your choice, with access to a private meet and greet with Lavar, plus a signed headshot. It's a per pretty and nice deal for ten grand. Yeah, that's the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> But it would be for somebody who has that kind of money, go for it. Yeah, if you, you run, know, a, that's a, we, we support wear, you. Go for it. Exactly. If you want to wear, the money's going to a great. It, the money's going to a great cause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, how many of us? The, 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 reading Rainbow, the show was actually a bit too old. For, I was too old for it. Yeah. But my brothers were definitely affected by it. My brother Matt was definitely. So affected Terry, by if it. you and Alan scrape together twenty five k, maybe you could get <laughs> Lavar to come on the show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Scrape Same. together. Scrape That's together. A, yeah. Following the second mortgage on the house. Not going to happen. Um, but oh, congratulations to the really entire Reading show, Rainbow yeah. team on reaching three million, and hopefully you'll reach your stretch goal of five. It's amazing, yeah. You have 31 days to go. They can do it in 31 days. I think so. I've been, I've hey, been telling... Hey, TNG crew, make it so. <laughs> yeah. Spe speaking of TNG crew and, and, and actual news. Yes? Did you... Uh, did you either of you happen to see the Will Wheaton project? No. I told you. Did you not see my tweet? I did not. Probably because I was too busy laughing at the Will Wheaton project. Well, I have. I have. I. I made myself a promise, and I had a hard time breaking it. And what promise was that, Terry? Not to watch the uh, Sci Fi Channel anymore. What did it you watch? I made myself a promise after they canceled the last one of my favorite shows. 
that I would not watch sci-fi anymore. I was tired of their bullshit. Okay. So, I'm not. I'm, but are, are I, they not now... Ended, I am but, now done with sci-fi. But now they're swinging back the other way, so shouldn't Too you late? be giving them your support? Did I? Shouldn't you be? I'm just telling you. You know what? No. So There's you don't a, believe... How many times does a minute, the person have to that's be That's not very... That's be not told, very... Don't go back to the person who beats you. That's not very Federation... Uh, Oh, yeah, it is. I thought rehabilitation and all of that. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Fool me. The problem is is that they fooled me more than twice, right? How many shows did they cancel? Well, you missed an awesome show because the Will Wheaton Project is hilarious. I just, I, I can't, I would, I would, I'll wait, I guess. I don't know. I just, I, ha, I, I, I morally but, can't allow myself to do it. By watching it, you could. I don't care. If, if people take well, the, the same stance. Whose fucking fault was hold that? Hold on. If people take the same stance as you, then they're all then they're going to have is the reality succeed. shows. Oh my God. Isn't that an amazing thing? Then that's what tells you and the producer should find out what you should do and who you should hook up with before you sign a goddamn contract. <clears throat> I love you, Will Wheaton, but damn if it, you're you should have known better. If you let me finish, wow. if people take the same stance as you, then all you're going to be stuck with on sci-fi is the reality shows, because those are what are going to be getting the ratings, and they won't do original programs and such, because you're you're doing this. Well, then whose fault is that? Why Yours. is it my fault? You're, How you're, does it come to be my fault when they're when the they ones put on the kind doing of the lousy you programming want to see, you're not watching? With. Because when you're not no, watching that the kind is, of shows you, know you want to see... That's that's exactly the kind of mentality that leave people in victimized positions. Oh, it's for your God's fault sake. for getting yourself into this situation. That's bullshit. Bullies are bullies, and sci-fi is a bully, and I'm not going to deal with or, them anymore. Or they see mm-hmm. the research that people aren't watching because it's not the original program like they love, and then they go back to doing it because that's what the audience wants, and then the audience doesn't doesn't then watch I'll because be they're the being one who bullheaded. Out for the good programming. There we go. Exactly. Yeah, there. Happy Sunday, everybody. <laughs> We're back to our old bitching. <laughs> I don't care. I, I'm, I, I can't bring myself to it. I just can't yet. I just can't. Yes, I, I Janice, made myself. We- I made myself a promise that when they canceled Warehouse 13, I was done with them. It it's was not a very the public. Vi- promise. Hold on. I, I'm tired. I, I, I'm getting sick of this blaming the victim analogy. It's not blaming the victim. It's not a crime. But when um, a company does their research and sees what actually people want to see on their network and then start to do that, that's called you going with what the audience wants. Okay. Exactly. Except don't you think that at this particular time, I as a consumer have already developed my point of view of their product and have determined that it is likely that they will just cancel another show I love. Yeah, but any network can do that. You but think I'm not terrified of that with, hi, Fox is doing Gotham. Hello, Firefly Network. You think I'm not terrified that they're going to do that with Gotham? And now you understand why I don't watch Fox either, except for Cosmos? Actually, and I watch that on National Geographic Channel. Well, then they're it's never the same gonna... thing. I have a right as a consumer not to give them my money because they burned me. And I'm not going to burn them. I'm not going to allow them to burn me anymore. And as much as I adore Will Wheaton, I'm not going to let them use it as some kind of a, a, a bait to bring me back in just so they can burn me again. It has happened too many times. Where, where, is, our, where is our Klingon warrior? He's not a Klingon warrior. He's hiding again because no. mom and dad are yelling. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your point of view? Mike, are you going to watch it? Well, sadly, the only way for for these these networks to to figure out that that this is what people want is to watch, you know. And so, I'm 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 going to support the shows. I'm going to try to watch live, Good which is you. such a pain in the ass. I don't uh, so, you know, that way I get counted. <laughs> But, you know, I, I, I want scripted shows. I want good storytelling. And the only way that's going to happen is if I sit my ass down in that chair at whatever time they tell me, which I hate. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, Don't tell me. So Mike, Mike very succinctly and, and wonderfully put what I was trying to say. And, and I applaud him for that. That's his decision. And I'm glad that you guys are. I just personally made myself a promise that I wouldn't do it. So. Well, then you really shouldn't watch any network at all because they're all doing it. And let's see. How many shows am I watching right now? Right now, none because you're listening to us. 
uh, and none because part in us. Shield is off until I don't the fall. Us, and what other one show? Well, we'll watch Cosmos again because I think. Are you not watching? Oh, you, you have Tomorrow Night is yet, the right? Tomorrow no, Night is the finale. Salem. I don't watch. No. Why would I you just, not watch Salem? Honey, because I'm it's Braga. Kinda, no. Oh, no, I was no, going to no, say no. because I. No. By the way, I have officially I filed paperwork with the Vatican that I have forgiven Braga. So. <laughs> No, I I like Agents of Shield. I will watch it when it comes back in the fall. Uh, we watched, well, like I said, oh. Warehouse Thirteen's gone. I don't watch Arrow, not because uh-huh. I, I just didn't watch it from the start. And to be honest with you, that one particular character, he just doesn't excite me a lot. Who? Arrow. It just it. it Oliver I'm not, Queen. I am not. I'm just now getting into the comics, my dear. And DC just doesn't throw me. <laughs> But their TV show is – oh, my God. You really don't I know will what you're watch. I, I might sit down. Now, I am upset because this weekend, Alan and I found out that there was another show that I kind of went, huh, I should watch this show. And it's called Turn. Have you seen this? Turn? It's on AMC. Oh, it's the oh, – Turn. Oh, the Revolutionary War one. Yeah. yeah. Where did that one come from? Um, if you watched Walking Dead, you would have seen it promoted endlessly. Uh, see, well, yeah. I, watch, I don't like – I don't like zombies. I don't like vampires. I don't like werewolves. I don't like, you know, witches. I'm just, I'm kind of done. Wow, you're really boring. How did that happen? Well, no, I'm not boring. I'm just, (laughs) I'm spent, you know. I've been living with vampire books since... Yeah, but this is the Salem's the first witches show I can think. Going back, well, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, I didn't watch that. And there was also the... um... Because I boycott NBC. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I don't. Well, then you know why aren't you boycotting sci-fi? Because they're no. You know NBC. what happened? I forgot Sleepy, and actually, Sleepy Hollow is Fox. Um, yeah. I forgot it was on. Yeah, it's a good it was show. On, it's on against something else. And and, I, and not the least of which is it. They did with Sleepy Hollow what I hate what they do with other shows, and that is they move it. Oh, did they? Did they, they move it around? It. Yeah, I don't know what fucking night it's on anymore, or yeah. if it was. Yeah, that's the one. And that to me, this looked like an interesting scripted show. Because it doesn't involve werewolves, vampires, zombies, witchcraft. I mean, it involves a, a revolutionary war spy ring. How? That's to me. Well, that's AMC AMC does very good original shows. So, and 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 I'm bummed that I. So I might Have go back and Americans? watch that one. I might go back and watch that one. Have you watched the Americans? Uh, no. I actually saw the first half of the first season. Now our 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 friend, um, the lovely um, uh, Andrea. Is a big fan of that show, it, and that was another one. I forgot. I think it's on FX. Um, I forgot just what night it was on because it went against something else. Oh no, it's on like late too, if I remember correctly. But that was a really good show. Very well done. And the, and I'll tell you, I'm going to throw into that whole werewolf, which is vampires thing. Anything that's post-apocalyptic, I'm kind of bun, I'm done with that now too. Bored. Well, boring. Then boring. don't go. Then don't go see Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past. I don't have to watch Defiance. I don't have to watch Rev. Well, that's got canceled. It's you know I'm just. That's right. Orange is the new black. I, I would. I would. I might start watching that. Thank I've, you, I've seen one episode and it was amazing. And I would like to. But the, um, thing, yeah, with, yes, the Andrew, thing with Orange um, is the New Black is you can watch it all at once. Right. So, yes, Andrew. The Americans is the one with um the girl that played Felicity. What's her name? And they're 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 Soviet spies in the early 1980s living yeah, in the United States. Yeah, here it's pretty amazing. It's it's yeah. Um, Mikey. Speaking of of Agents of Shield, way back earlier, <laughs> uh, yes. that reminded me. I had seen an article this week that um, the Winter Soldier DVD will not have one of the special features that have appeared on as regular features on previous ones. Um, oh, I guess the, the shorts, things? the yeah. shorts, uh, I guess w- one of the shorts introduced us to the character of agent Carter, agent Carter and, and, and whatnot. But winter soldier apparently doesn't, is not going to have one of these shorts. Hmm. Okay. So We're boring sun sale, by the way. <laughs> all right, so Dale, we can get back to the Star Trek stuff now. Well, other people were all engaged in this, so yeah, well, yes, Kerry Russell. Thank you, Andrew. That's it. Uh, he's a wonder, that guy. Well, the uh, try the veal. The, it's very funny, and yes, James Kerwin. I promise to say this when I post this. So here I go. Post this in the G. Everybody saw the articles that came out about 
the this essentially the tra- not oh wait this is no 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 that's not the tractor beam where is it <laughs> and where is it um, oh the article that the, James about, put about the, the, uh, the transporter, transporter. yeah i saw his go? little diatribe it was awesome love you uh, yeah Kerwin. okay when James Kerwin goes on a diatribe on Facebook, read it, everyone, because it's real good. <laughs> and James Kerwin, as you know, is the director for um, episode Yesterday three. Was a Lie and Star Trek Continues Episode 3. He's a, he also happens to have studied not just filmmaking, but physics, the uh, physics major, and he's physics brilliant. Club. I'm in the physics <laughs> club. So he was basically Brian from The Breakfast Club. <laughs> he's, uh, he is a he is a Renaissance man, and uh, he posted a, a rant about the transporter. And the the idea the announcement was is that these this group of scientists had transported was it an atom or was it just a photon? I don't remember. Three meters. I think it was an atom. It was an atom. It was like a whole atom, right? Well, the the problem is is that the one thing that the science doesn't really tell you is that it's not the same atom. <laughs> and. Neither is it in the transporter. Right. So it doesn't really transport as much as it it, it allows through the, the the rules of the known rules of physics. It kind of destroys the original and recreates a new atom, or it it kind of brings it to life on the other side of where you know it's going to be. It's not the original atom. It's it's a new one. <laughs> And so James Kerwin goes into this amazingly scientifically detailed diatribe about how transporters will never be possible (laughs) because they're morally wrong. Uh, Not the least of which is we would never have enough database to be able to uh, uh, to actually accurately map the position of everybody's atoms at once. It's 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 a brilliant it's a brilliant diatribe, and I I recommend everybody read it. But it was just yes, James, we understand. But it was kind of cool to think about. Come on, be able to transport it would be awesome. You know, maybe the human species will get over their moral uh, problems with not being their original selves when they get <laughs> zapped down to another planet. I'm just saying. No, whatever. So that means that. we're never going to have transporters at warp speed across the galaxy. But JJ said we will, <laughs> and, and he that wouldn't the Federation lie. would hide them, and he wouldn't lie. Yeah, that's right. I'm beating this horse again. Well, there was an article that came out on The Guardian on May 28th that uh, Skype Translate had a a demo and showed real-time voice-to-voice translation between English and German. What does that mean for us Star Trek geeks? That by the end of 2014, we will actually have a working voice-to-voice translator. I know. That's really crazy. Be be able to talk to to Tanya, and she can just speak Russian, although her English is better than mine. Wouldn't that be neat? I just think that's... That's pretty freaking awesome. So really to me, is. that's – now, when somebody gets how a replicator – I How can it account for, like, dialects and and accents? Because I, I think we've had this uh, the conversation, like, yeah, because it was when um, Larry was on, and we were talking about the entomology of words from, like – from the south right you know it just it just it it is it's a database issue it's having the ability there are some words that do not translate but they get absorbed by another language right so we have a lot of french words in our language and a lot of latin words a lot of latin a lot of spanish Yes, and for and, those and, that may be new some, to the GNT show, we have guests on, and we actually discuss the entomology of words because true. we are those geeks. <laughs> Boomer and a sooner. lot of German words because they don't have an appropriate English translation. Well, in translator and in um, even in um, you know right now what we have is like the the, the text the talk to text translation. Those words just get carried over if there's no. If there's no translation for them in the database, the, the database the the translator throws out the original word, in the assumption that the other person will understand what it means. Like Schadenfreude, right? There is only one definition for Schadenfreude, and it's Schadenfreude. <laughs> if there is no, you just you you the definition of it is much longer than another word. You don't translate into another word. So I think that's I just think that's really cool. And when we start getting the notices that they're starting to make replicators. Then, then our world will change. You know, you just made Janice cry, by the way, with the transporter news. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. 
But as James would say, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle makes it impossible. Yeah, okay. who's Heisenberg and why has he got principles? Jesus. And isn't he the guy from, like, Breaking Bad? Just <laughs> There you go. <laughs> well, according to Trek, there's a Heisenberg compensator. Whatever, Paul. Etymology, <laughs> etymology. I don't give a fuck. Go back. Go to bed. So here's the thing. When somebody comes up with an Heisenberg compensator in real life, that will be the news. There you go. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to say, doesn't that sound like a really good porn movie? The Heisenberg compensator. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. And, And in proof that Janice does not get sarcasm, she says, I am not crying. Yeah, no. I already see that stuffy. <laughs> we love her. Welcome to my life. <laughs> All right. The next thing we have from Star StarTrek.com oh, is a very ahead. cool little video about uh, the 3D Enterprise that was made. It was This guy made this little 3D Enterprise. It's a tiny little thing, but he made it in 15 minutes in 3D printers. And there goes the replicator. This is, I'm telling you, the 3D printers are, are the very beginning of what I, I see as, is the, the, the foundation for replicators. Cool yep. stuff, Maynard. Uh, you, you shared a link for the tractor beam, but you didn't talk about that. Yeah, or was I, that I, the, a mistake? It was a mistake, and I have yet to go find it. So, Matthew Anderson, will you find the transporter one? Well, I found <laughs> a transporter <laughs> one. <laughs> now we're putting our audience to actual work. Work. Yeah. Love it. I figured Matthew Anderson was going to beat me anyway. I know. The, but, oh, look. Oh, Mikey! I've been sitting on this for like 10 minutes. Nice. <laughs> You come through. That's hey, awesome. Easy family show. Well, I guess let me talk about the the tractor beam one because th- this has been a week for Star Trek, you know, technology, you know, becoming that much closer to reality. Because I had seen, I don't know if this is the same article, but I'd seen an article earlier this week about. Um, they were able to create a tractor beam using sound waves. Oh, so, wow. And apparently this is an ultrasound device. So, yeah, it looks like it's the same thing. So, um, yeah, scientists, wow. You know, they're making Star Trek tech, you know, just that much more closer. And, oh, something else that I've come across, sorry for all the squirrels, but along the same lines, is the tricorder competition. Um our friend what? and the tricorder. Oh, the sex. Yes. Yeah, the tricorder competition. They, um, Qualcomm. Uh, our friend Eric Hall, cosplayer extraordinaire. <laughs> yes. Um, he had posted a link where you can go and and vote for your favorite Star Trek meme that uh, for the um, the tricorder. So he's got a, pic- a picture of uh, he's got a couple different submissions but one of them my favorite is a picture of him as dressed as data and it has a caption that says um, um, something like Ar- argillian flu or uh, anemia <laughs> and at the bottom says you know the Qualcomm tricorder <laughs> it was cool huh, but very can, cool it's a competition there's there's hundreds right. of them on the site and you can vote for your favorites so I do not have the link, but you should definitely look for that and check it out. That's cool. And Eric, somebody else posted a check or something from SpaceX. I can't remember what that was about. Oh, no. Okuda. That's Okuda that's had posted okay. uh, SpaceX their Falcon Seven Five. I don't know. It's what the, the, their new uh, seven man uh, capsule. So yeah, um, like, <laughs> it's so been a week for technology. That's for sure. The next thing we have on our Star Trek news list is something else to make us feel old. Oh, this geez, week, I need we that. celebrate the 30th anniversary of Star Trek Three. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Star Trek Three. They blew up the Enterprise, man. <laughs> Come on. You know that your heart went like, wow, they really did it. That was a spectacular self-destruct, too. It was. It was. It was great. But, yeah, All right. Were came you more out upset? on June 1st, 1984. So today, Were you more upset by David's death or the Enterprise's destruction? The Enterprise's destruction, yeah. of course. You cold-hearted bastards. 
Yeah. Well, David was kind of a ninny. And we, uh, he, the really, yeah, but we he had was only, tagging Savick, so that was good. We that had was. only really known him, you know, for a relatively short period like of time. Like 20 minutes. Really? Yeah, Come on. so there wasn't really all that much emotional investment. Yeah, we, we got a, we put in about as much emotional investment into David as Kirk did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my goodness. That but, was stunningly accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, yet, let's discuss Star Trek Deadbeat Dads then. Yeah. Kirk oh, wins that one hands no, down. You will get no argument from me on that one. By Fuck far. Fuck Ducat was a better father. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though it's true yeah no you'll get no argument from me when it comes to the whole you know bad parenting thing both kirk and marcus deserve big awards for being shitty parents i would Poor say David. she does she, she was a she she what? obviously i mean what i'm sorry i i i don't she raised forgive him well. women who do she bullshit raised him like well. that easily. raised him purposely without his father but isn't that not one because of the he things was a jerk women but because she for? didn't approve but isn't that something that fucked. women have been fighting for is that they don't need the man they they can do that no dude don't um, get into this um, i will bury uh, you uh, she does <laughs> live in the desert after all <laughs> I'll put you with Heisenberg. And I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> George Silsby. Riker was a better dad to his fake son in one episode than Worf was in several seasons. Oh, my. It's true. Come on. Poor Alexander. Oh, yeah, but he was a sniveling little prick. He was. He was a little snit, too, but, you know. And I don't believe that a little child like that would have come from K- Kalar. I'm sorry. Kalar would not have, have raised a sniveling little kid. I just don't believe that either. And talk about another woman who refused to, you know, get in touch with dad because she, I don't know. I, I don't like the ra- the way that writers wrote women and going, oh, well, I'll just keep my son away from the father because why? Was there a reason? Weren't you they trying to comment on the- what they do for a living? You might not want to. Oh, screw them. Weren't they trying to co- sort of comment on But isn't on that their the- personal choice to fuck whoever they want to fuck? And then decide to have the child and 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 not then have him involved. I deserved. thought that was. It's not that's... like I just felt bad for the kid. But weren't they trying to comment on on single parenthood in a poor way? Again, it was writers, poorly done. But yeah, yeah. The, 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 once again, the writers of, of a few decades ago wrote because they don't. They just didn't understand. It's the same reason why we end up with. Tropy marriages is because that's how they perceive marriage, right? They only write what they know. Apparently, they don't understand that marriage isn't like that. Marriage isn't that way. Or worse, maybe they were in a marriage and that's how it was. And boy, who do we feel sorry for then, right? (laughs) It's like if you have a marriage that is any way like what is portrayed in most of Hollywood, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I would say that Married with Children was probably the most accurate representation of marriage I've ever seen. Oh, no. You know, that's not true either. Actually, Ray's parents on Everybody Loves Raymond is accurate because that's my parents. <laughs> Holy crap, that's the most accurate. <laughs> well. And, and, well, this just brings all right, I'm going to I'm going to go off on a, on a on a gettytorial then. Okay. I want everybody who, who watches sitcoms and all of that to do me a favor. Reverse the comments from a woman to a man on any sitcom and see how quickly the man becomes a complete despicable utter ass. But yet have- everybody laughs when the woman calls him an idiot or tells him how stupid he is constantly and all of those things. I agree with you. I agree with you. I no, I know right. you and I have talked about it. That you. I hate the way that women are written in all of this. this because, come on, really? Are all women nags? That- yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, I'll- <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. But really, everybody loves Raymond. A great show. And I don't like. But look how shitty Deborah treated Ray. 
Oh, I agree. And look at how shitty every pretty woman who nags on a fat guy in a or a, yeah. in a or a, yeah. But a, I would let Leah Remini treat me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just it goes with the it's, accent. Yeah, it's it's a it's an unfortunate sitcom trope now is to have pretty woman, normal looking guy, and because she's she can treat him like any way he wants because he gets to keep the pretty woman. It's but but somehow <laughs> all men are just the biggest blithery. Peter Griffin yeah. is how they really view Once men again, in marriage. And if you're a handsome guy, what are you? Michael Fassbender. It, well, that's true. No, in 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 the the world of tropeism in sitcoms, if a if a handsome man comes in, what is he? He's a jerk and a threat. Or gay. Or that's gay. a good point. That's a really good point. Or gay. Yep. That's and 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 oh, Alan, there you go, everybody. The foundation of ninety nine percent of the sitcoms out there. Alan, that uh, that trope's been around a while in commercials, though. The stupid husband, smart wife. Yeah, and but it's. I yeah, love that well, sunset. All I love that. It yeah. started with the uh, non Chinese secret. Oh. Oh my God. Calgon, not Calgon. Yeah. Was yeah, it? it was Calgon. God, what a Ancient god awful. Chinese secret. Oh my god. Well, and you can go back to. Well, no, that wasn't stupid. That was just funny, though. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Remember that? The cockroaches? No, that was uh, for like Alka Seltzer or something. And his tummy was upset because he ate like, a giant oh, yeah. meatball sub. In second grade, we did a knockoff of that as a skit when we were termites on Noah's Ark. That's some funny shit right there. I thought so too. We made for it second up all grade? on our own. Yeah, we made it up all on our own too. Thank you. What? A himbo? Yeah, instead of a bimbo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although the data, the data in drag thing, I'm sorry, that goes straight back to Bugs Bunny and that will always be funny. Yeah. You'll never get me off of that. That will always be funny. Um, No, but seriously, people watch, watch, uh, particularly sitcoms are the biggest offenders of it. (laughs) Sorry. I know. I'm looking at it too. It's, it's hypnotic. I had to swallow my coffee. (laughs) So Sensei Sensei is not a fan when we go off on a squirrel. No, but I love the facial on that. That's hilarious. And I did not mean that the way it sounded. Um, no, it's okay. Alan's having a good Sunday. <laughs> we understand. There's a great article about um, uh, James B. Sicking. Yes. Played Only captain Alan. we ever saw with a riding crop or a swagger <laughs> stick. <laughs> swagger stick. Um, and most people will remember him for his portrayal of Captain Styles in Hill Street Blues. One of the great shows of all time. I mean, Captain Styles in, in Star Trek Three, but he played... Um, God damn it. He was a lieutenant, wasn't he? Hunter. Hunter. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and Hill Street... God, what a great... Talk about a great television series. Oh, that really changed the way dun, 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 a lot of dramas were done on television. Dun, where in, dun, dun. It was grittier, more realistic. Maybe Mike Post's best theme, although the Rockford Files theme is up there. That is. But there's a great oh, there interview with him um, from uh, Star Trek.com, so you can read about Star Trek 3. You know the, I the, the, the thing I liked about him? He looked like a captain. He did. Either way, that's that. All right. That is it for the Star Trek. Wow. Now, Mike, I'm, quick question. As, as we get closer to the the big unveiling, you can see the clock on the wall ticking down, people. Mm-hmm. Will Will said Mr. Ward be joining us? I have not seen him yet. Okay. So he's probably sleeping in. Oh, Good bastard. for him. Good for him. So selfish. <laughs> so we, should we do, do a little Star Trek Online news then? Sure. He was awesome. Doogie Hauser's father, and he was very good on that show. Oh, I'm sicking? Mm-hmm. That was a fun show, too. You know, I've gone back, and I've seen it every now and then. I, I, I like, switch it. It actually was. And I loved his friend Vinny. Yeah. Vinny was a real kid. Yeah, he was. And that's why they had him in there, is to give give Doogie that ground. Grounding. But they wrote him really well as a good as, as a real kid. Right. And I liked the, the relationship he had with Doogie's parents. Like, they, they were like, ugh, he's here again. But they, they, they looked after him like one of the family, because he kind of was. And my best friend growing up, Joe Lavoy, that was like that. He was, they basically lived in our house. Well, when your father's a mean alcoholic. <laughs> tend to find someplace else to live. I want to play Star Trek Online. Engineering here. Warp engines are online. Course laid in, Captain. Engage. Your ship. Warning. Ship is under attack. 
your crew. Your destiny. Well, in Star Trek Online, this week we have a the shuttle the shuttle event uh, weekend. <laughs> Michael, I'm just annoyed with shuttles. Oh, I thought you belched. No. <laughs> Didn't it sound like you belched, Terry? No. That was a growl. He oh, it went, really did sound like you belched. I was like, wow, Mike, we funny. really, we really brought him over to the dark side. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll no, get my it's the rant shuttle later. event weekend and through tomorrow, which is Monday, June 2nd. Uh, if you fly the atmosphere assault, the Federation and Klingon fleet alert, no wind scenario, storming the spire, and the vault shuttle event, and the shuttles in your shuttles, you get a whole bunch of extra marks and stuff, which everybody seems to be um pouting i was in uh, the caspian division team speak the other day and everybody was like i got so many i'm like really they were like, yeah oh so, and this is a, the precursor to what i believe the Riza event is coming up soon yes michael yes i'm looking forward to that but yeah uh the, I, I think the shuttles are pretty much worthless i mean we have you haven't done shuttle pvp with us i don't like flying shuttles they're worthless um, I mean, but when you're playing against another worthless <laughs> shuttle, it can be pretty funny. It's like it's like trying to kill somebody with a pea shooter. When you have like twenty or forty shuttles whipping around in a, in a <laughs> shuttle only PvP, it is hilarious. It's very funny because you're flying so fast. You're like, whoa, there goes Lem. <laughs> <laughs> There is a certain humor to it. Is it supposed to be serious? I don't think so. <laughs> but or you're right, Michael. just get in your shuttle and fly around ESD, and everything's so much bigger. Well, my biggest issue with the shuttles and is that we have we, we get to select one person, and they always have an ensign level uh, tech. Why, um, why? Why only ensign? The runabout I mean, has two, doesn't it? Does it? I think so. I don't know. Are you guys talking about the the bridge officer layout? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why? I mean, why only the one? I mean, that it's it. it, it it's, shuttles are small, Mike. Well, I can understand having one <laughs> one one bridge officer, right. but why, but why only one limit? It, why limit them to an ensign? Uh, come on, Jadzia, really? Oh, it, I see what he's saying. But, I mean. We, the cat, even if the captain was on the away team, and the, Delta the pilot, too. And, the, and there was a, usually all, all two pilots. So you know the pilot, and then so in stow, it's the captain and, and a bridge officer. That's fine, but come on, How many, he he rarely ever took an ensign with him. I'm not going to be taking an ensign with me. Why should well, my shuttle be limiting my, my bridge officers to instant level? Well, Got Mike, it. we can't go by we can't, can't go by argument. we can't Would go by say? Star Trek and who made up landing parties slash away teams because you don't empty out your entire command staff to beam down to a planet to see if it's safe either. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but w what I'm saying is, come on, give us a little variety. Why are all do we have all these shuttles and all of them are are, are restricted to instant level? I think it's stupid. You know, there, uh, for instance, the, the I fly on my Klingon. I fly what is the uh, uh, essentially the the captain's chariot. Okay, shouldn't right. that have a little bit more oomph to it than an ensign level? To me, I think so. Shouldn't shouldn't the captain's yacht have a little more kick to it than an ensign level? I think so. <laughs> I mean, well, then again, you also have the, the shuttles that are really like a one-person shuttle that you still get a bridge officer in. So, well, those should have the ensign. You know, the, have those should be fine. I'm not complaining about those. But it's like, why are all shuttles seemingly only restricted <laughs> to the one C or the you know the ensign level C? Have you have you asked Cryptic about this? Should we have Al on to ask him about this? Well, I'm talking about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, then good. <laughs> and uh, just to, 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 since I'm on the topic of shuttles, these missions, no you know, yes. they're, they're, they're just a restricted version of the, of the, the full, you know, um, version of, of those missions. For instance, yeah, the no win scenario, or excuse me, the storming the spire, it's still the stor storming the spire, except now you're, you're just in a shuttle, which is like, Why? Is blowing my hair out because it's it just I don't know. It, 
It just seems really easy. George brings up a good point. Having a shuttle, though, bring up like a torpedo spread three wouldn't really be accurate either. I think it, it, well, you he, can't get the torpedo spread. Well, yeah, you could. Sure, why not? I think if, if where are if they going to the, where are they going to be held in the shuttle? Well, they, what torpedoes are held in any shuttle, and why are they different sizes? I think if the bridge officer can can, can do it, it should be allowed. I, I think re- restricting it to once to instant is stupid. Well, I don't disagree, and do I, you I think get it your, should go I get to commander your, or tap out at like. Lieutenant Commander. I think I think Lieutenant. Uh, the the next one up would be okay. Okay. But, the Delta shuttle has that. I mean, the oh, Delta flyer. Oh, so okay. So they do have that on some. Mm-hmm. Well, then let's knock it up one more. You know, go go to the three seats on on the high end. You know, like, like the, the runabout. Like the yacht and the Delta flyer. Yeah. You know, the high end stuff should be a little more oomphy, a little more power. Okay. I, I, now, you know, now Midnight Shadow saying we should have DOFs for shuttles. Why not? You know what? It's just an. I'm just saying that. Don't you already? Don't the more DOS DOS though, they sell, <laughs> the better for the game. It's an. It's an. That is a revenue potentiality. I see it happening. I really do. I think you can have DOFs, and you should have DOFs for your shuttle. Well, don't then we? why is our landing party only restricted? Don't to- they already? Don't they already count your DOFs? Your space DOFs? Yeah. Count for your should count for your. I think so. Shuttle. Yeah. So why can't we get bigger landing parties then? I'm sorry, OA teams. Well, remember that glitch we had that one day? <laughs> Wasn't that the best? Yeah. Yeah. There, a couple More of years glitch. ago, Caspian, we had a glitch where it allowed all of us to beam down to the same mission with our away teams. So we had 45 of us. And that, five was, times that five. was inside the Borg Cube, wasn't it? We were just blasting through that thing. <laughs> it was. We it ran was, through that thing in the winter time. It was pathetic time. murder, and we had so much fun. Yeah, every there was five of us in the team, and all five of us had all four of our bridge officers with us. So there was so the main crew, the main uh, our, our own characters, like was would 20, be dancing, and our right. away teams would be doing all the fighting <laughs> against like the twenty. Queen. Twenty. It was twenty five characters in the mission. I was doing a was running the running man while fighting thing the queen. Ever done. <laughs> You know, it was the funny. I think I still have a screen cap of that. And I brought like all engineers with me, so we had like <laughs> massive firepower. It was it was killing everybody's um, graphics cards. It was really funny. Oh, it also happened on the Tholians, remember? Yeah, that's. I think that's when it that, really did yeah, happen. Yeah, it was for the us. Tholians. It was a ground mission yeah. on a planet, and it was pathetic. <laughs> It was just, it was very, very clean. It was very fast. We all just sat there and watched our bridge officers commit mayhem. And awesome. many accolades were earned. <laughs> and many accolades were earned. That is very true. That was, that was very funny. The, but, uh, go ahead. So, um, let's see. The, um, I, I, if we're finished talking about the shuttle stuff, I'd like yeah. to mention the summer event. Yeah, I just put the uh, link in the chat room. Go for it. Rocket surfboards? Rocket Hell surfboards. yeah! Yeah, rocket that, surfboards. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> rocket surfboards and... Women suits. Although they didn't have any sneak peek p- pictures, so I guess they're still deciding oh, I've which seen ones them. it. Somebody's got them. Matthew Anderson, I know somebody had them out there. They posted them from the hog files. Yeah, I've seen those, but we yeah. don't know which, whether or not they're actually going to be in-game or not. Just because it's in the hog files doesn't mean it actually gets used. Oh no, it says right here in the in the announcement. No, yeah, what I'm saying, is... yes, it says that we're getting the, the suits, but we don't oh, know yeah. which ones. Uh, and I've oh, I've seen good. dozens of them yeah. from the hog files. So I'm just saying, I, I want to see what which ones we're going to actually have access to. And if I get this right, it says it's please note that swimwear does not fall under the uniform code for members of the various exploratory and military services, and thus such items are non-regulation for mission duty. Does that mean they're only going to be available on RISA? I think it's going to be the um, the yeah probably only on Ryza. Um, is, isn't there like um, an option? Uh, there's the non there's the non uniform right. Op- there's the non uniform I guess caption that you would have for your your uniforms. But I don't know the off duty uniform. You know we have the off duty slot, but I don't know off duty also means you can wear it anywhere. Speaking of being on Ryza. Has, yeah. has, have any of you talked to Teresa lately? Because I've not heard from her in forever. 
I have. She, okay. She doing she's okay? She's busy. She's okay. Fine. She's busy. She's a very busy lady. And our speaking, we'll get to that as one of our announcements about our okay. friends over at Trek Radio. I miss you, um, Riza. We miss you, Riza. Um, let's see. So, of course, you'll need those swimsuits when you take off on a power board, a surfboard with an ion engine. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is awesome. This is, uh, there's a power board race where you can line up with other competitors and dash over the water around the island. Naturally, you can surf around the waters whenever you like, even when the race isn't running. Completing the race without going out, without going outside of the track will award special tags that you can turn in for new feather monkey pets. <laughs> So what happened to the birds? Are, are 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 they not doing the birds anymore? I think the birds were last year's. I like the birds. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't or, say that they're not going to be there. Or are, are will we still be able to have the birds and stuff? Because I have like birds from last year. And yeah, I don't know. It's just. Okay. You're breaking up. Other monkey pets. <laughs> Other monkey. Other monkey pets. I don't know if I'm the only person that just doesn't get excited about these things. That made me laugh. It made me bull. <clears throat> They're still doing the Horgon hunt. Well, yeah. You can build sand castles and sculptures on the beach. That's new. Talk to one of the local sand geologists, and you can look pail in a bucket where you who, can claim a spot to build your own sculpture. Who just started recording? That wasn't recording. That was... It's, it's that was your channel started recording. Well, your uh, messages are all messed up because that's not what just happened. Oh, uh, look at that. Look at that. So I'm all excited now. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, I know. I'm all giggly now. Well, that's from oh. vodka. <laughs> well, I am. So there you go. We have a new summer event coming up in Star Trek Online, and we can build sand castles. I'm just thinking that's pretty funny. The Michael. monkey looks like an undine. <laughs> Doesn't it? It's missing oh, the third yeah. leg. It's cute. Enough cute. I want carnage. <laughs> Speaking of carnage, Terry, would you like to... Hello, sir. Can we get him to talk? Working. There it is. There he is. There's the dulcifer tones. They're working. There it is. Working. Good morning, Ladies sir. and gentlemen, Dayton Ward. Da -da -da. Okay, Good morning. I'm talking too loud. Talking too loud. You woke me up. <laughs> <laughs> I do tend to do that. I'm sorry. Well, it was our argument, Terry, about Sci-Fi Network. I was getting all feisty and stuff. Welcome to the show. Everybody doing? Happy one hundredth. Happy one hundredth. I can believe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's quite enough. Now, time. question: How many of those did Kevin write with you? Huh? All, of <laughs> all my pain. Look at all the people going crazy in the chat room saying, "You know, Janice, down girl." <laughs> he knows her chat room, so I don't know what's going on. She's a smart woman. She's, she, smart she's woman. engaged to me. <laughs> well, you know, every, yeah. for every exception, was it you're the exception that proves the rule or something? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it's been, it's been 100 weeks. And, and we apologize and thank you at the same time. <laughs> I can't believe the amount of hard drive space and dead brain cells have gone into that effort. <laughs> the amount of vodka that you have consumed. Well, actually, well, that was going to happen economy. anyway. That was going to happen anyway. I'm, I'm a job creator, so. <laughs> That's like me. I, I keep Polish potato farmers working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even count the ones that I wrote and didn't send. <laughs> I mean, oh, you know, my. The, you know, the starter answers that I went, ah, that might be too far over the line. But... <laughs> no oh, my God, there's Satan outtakes. There is, well, I mean, i got to find it, but there is one question from way back where I answered it twice completely and sent I remember that, I sent yes. the second one because I thought, okay, this one doesn't make me feel as dirty. And then, <laughs> and then I told Nick, because he asked about it, and I said, you can have it, but if you ever read it out loud without my knowing about it, I will gut you in your own kitchen. Yeah. And I don't, as far as I know, he's, he's kept. His I've word. never, nope, never, never. Yeah, I knew I could count on you. We may have to unveil that one. Like in a, like a, we'll make that a special added content for the ebook version or something. Yeah, the Easter egg. Yeah, there you go. Because it's, 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 it's as filthy as anything I've ever written. You know? <laughs> then I am proud. That, that <laughs> Sounds like a winner. Say, hey, my mom might read this. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when it, that's pretty funny. Post that. That's yeah, if that one were posted on your blog and, and on the Facebook Oh, man, page. my mother might die of an instantaneous <laughs> broke, a big blood clot. Yeah, I mean, I, I completely failed as a mother. I can't believe you write shit like that. 
bed. <laughs> it's not like it was Fifty Shades of Grey. It takes me to task every once in a while once you read something where I go completely, like if I rant about something or colorful with the light. <laughs> <laughs> like, ma, people are watching. Do you get phone calls? No. Dayton, how could yeah. you? Uh, not yet. I haven't cried. I'm, I'm, you know, that's like my next goal. <laughs> it's a, a stretch goal. <laughs> Speaking of which, we were talking earlier about the uh, the Reading Rainbow stretch goal that they since they made a million dollars in twelve hours. Say, isn't it? Did they make like double what he was asking for? Like a two so, plus now? They're at three, 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 three now. Three point two now. right now. And they have a new stretch goal of five. Yeah, crazy. What's, what's, what, so what are they, I mean, is this, I guess I haven't, I haven't, I don't understand what he's trying. I mean, I, I get it. He's trying to bring it back, but is he trying to do it on his own, like on the web or is he? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I mean, he, he's he trying to bring get attention to, or you know, like for a TV network. It's I mean, not for a TV show. show. It's, it's not for the TV show. It's for the application or like, like an app or something. It's, it's, yeah. it's an application for schools. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's already he's already got it available for for Apple iPads, and he's just trying to expand it to more devices, more schools, make it free for schools. Trying to get it into libraries, I think is one of the stretch goals that he wants. So I think it's freaking awesome. More yeah. kids need to read it. Five billion. Hopefully, somebody will start paying attention. Yeah. But they can do something. But they have a professional team already in place. I think he's, he, they're all kind of on the, the website showing who the president is and the rest of the tech team plus the social media uh, person. Nice it's, a big, about, it's a pretty big team. Yeah. Nice to hear about something like this. All the Kickstarters out I've, I've kind of become jaded yeah. crowdsourcing. People are now coming up with all kinds of crap to, that they want people to throw. That's vaporware. That'll never happen. You know, make ever pay my bills, whatever the hell it is. That they're, I, I, exactly. I, like, I want to go to San Diego Comic Con. Can I have money? Oh, I've yeah. kind of gotten it. Hey, hey. <laughs> Don't don't diss on that one. Well, no, but I mean, when some, it comes to some of us are thinking of figuring out a way to go to conventions that way. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, or get Jim Beam to sponsor you or Jack Daniel, like that one yeah. guy did. <laughs> oh, so, that, yeah, was, that brilliant, was the brilliance though. of social media. Though, I know. There. So, but that was the one time that'll work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I yeah. mean, I I become real guarded when it comes to what I back. I mean, I'll back stuff from people I know, and not, it's like if it's a modest, they're not asking for the moon, a couple grand, so I can print my book or something. I will say the I only can, thing. I've given to are uh, Larry Nemechek's Con of Wrath and uh, I for Athena's Daughters. Right. I think the most outlandish one I've gone to is, is the Hollywood Museum trying to yeah. build. I thought, I was like, that's probably a long shot, but you know, Larry's involved and involved and Robert and Starbuck are involved. I'm like, okay, yeah, respectable some, group of guys. I don't exactly. want to run that. I don't a think it's going to happen. A bunch of respectable but, people are involved with that one then. But that is a big beastie. Well, I, a big it's going to be multi-stage. I mean, this 80 grand they're asking for is the first phase of it. And then they're going to they're have to come back and ask for more unless they can see corporate donors or something. And that's what that's about is the, really yeah. the 80 grand is just to do the business Right. Plan. So I'm like, eh, we'll see. But, I, you know, those guys are good people. I, if anybody can pull it off, it's that group of guys. Guys. Well, Dayton, Dayton, I, I have I have a bone to pick with you, my my marine friend. Okay, because I'm gonna care. Go ahead. No, I know. <laughs> we we've broken bread together. We've shared laughs at conventions. You, you still haven't introduced me to Neil Gaiman. What's up with that? Yeah, I can feel the eye roll from here. <laughs> I don't know the guy. He doesn't return my calls. He knows and everybody. He my, How do you not know he, him? He, well, I mean, he's one of the few guys that got my name spread on the restraining order. <laughs> I don't. I've never met him. That was everybody else. So you need to talk to Peter David or somebody on the East Coast. They'll know him. I'm sure I live Keith, in Kansas City. I mean, I'm sure Keith knows him. Do you think Neil Gaiman has ever come to Kansas City unless he was trapped on a flight where somebody's dog took a shit in the aisle or something? That's you the only way he would be in Kansas City. He was in Syracuse, New York. I'm sure Kansas City has made the list. The only reason people come to Kansas City that aren't actually living here is because plane is diverted for an emergency. I, I, saw, Kansas that works. City, I <laughs> saw Kansas City Comic Con on Heroes of Cosplay. I don't even get me started. Okay, well, I, I mean, I mean, up. yeah, whatever. No, I just, I just, I watched a couple. I watched the episodes that were specifically about Kansas City. That's oh, uh, and that was the one with the, the the mean Doctor Who women. Yeah, I'm like Kansas City is a great come visit. The Comic Con itself is a great show. It's way to represent. We're coming. Yeah, that'd be, I don't even know who these people are that they pull for the show, but I can't stand. But tell me, how did really Starfest go? It was fun. It was a it was a fun weekend. We were busy all weekend. Yeah, I mean Planet Comic Con. Come on down. It's a great show. Kansas City's a great town. People are friendly. Well, what what time of year is that? The, the Planet Comic Con. Uh, it's like this year. It was mid March. It'll be anywhere from mid March to early April, depending on you know when it falls and when they can get the conventions. But I mean, it's G and T may have to do a mid year vendor booth, Terry, in the middle of the country. 
Last year was the first year that they used their new convention space, which is a downtown. They didn't this year. They expanded their their footprint. So, um, hang on, I got, I got, I got. It's Dave's it, agents. Get off the going, show, they're crazy. I got no, I got to take a call for my kids. Hang on. A oh my god, the communicator chirp was cute. In to reality, the beaten phone. In reality, <laughs> that's his agent going. Why are you on that show again? Nothing good happens. Exactly, nothing good could come of it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to. I have a feeling. Dave's going to ask for more money in the next contract negotiations. Yeah, you read the new <laughs> yeah. S. Dayton, didn't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you, laughed out loud at the very start, the first... I laughed throughout. I mean, Yeah, was, but that, yeah. you know what line I'm talking about. Yes. Yes, I I know what line you're talking about. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to cue our, our audience in soon. Sunset, oh, that's adorable. Isn't it? Oh, my God. Janice could roleplay that. Totally. They're freaking what the the things on the side. What are those called? Ponytail. I don't know. The pigtail. Looks like ribs to me. No, the pigtail. Not the ribs. <laughs> oh, you know what, Matthew Anderson? When I went out to Kansas City a few years ago for Army Reserve, Dayton told me about this the best pancake place in the world. And it really was. Oh, speaking of which, um, you guys are gonna need a co host for next week. Paul, if you're free. Um, I will be serving in uniform, so uh, oh. I may be. I will be at the Pentagon. I have so. a feeling we're not going to have a show next week. I will be here. I'll find a way. <laughs> no, no, you, you know what? It, 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 it's a good ponytails. Thank you, Janice. Ponytails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I I have to go to the Pentagon next week for Army Reserve drill. So. Well then, I think I'm having a procedures done he's, for the he's next couple a weeks. Yeah, my so he's going to be in recovery. I think it's time for our oh mid mid pre-con break. Pre-con break. Yeah. Wait, our how mid- long is this break gonna be? No, <laughs> all right, all right. just a week. Speaking of which, are we doing cooking with GNT again this year before the con? Yes. Can as we a matter of fact, I've live? already discussed the menu with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, yes. Welcome right. back, Dave. Welcome back. My, my yeah. kids are doing a sleeper in the other parent call this morning. To pick it up uh, Dayton, you'll want to keep an eye out for cooking with G&T because it's basically everyone sitting around drunk while Terry cooks drunk. Yes. Sweet. Yeah, it's pretty The fun. last time we did it, I got felt up by a gay guy. Well, you know, you can cross it off your bucket list now. <laughs> well, no, because it was only felt up. Well, oh. you're still on the list. Excellent. And congratulations to Will and Brandon. Dave, yeah. you remember Will and Brandon from the convention last year? Yes, I do. I heard they got they got married. Congratulations. Yay. Yes. We're very happy for them. I, lo- I, I long for the day when their marriage will be recognized. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I mean, it'd be, it'd be nice if they could not have to worry about that from state to state. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. From state to state. Yeah, you're right. true. where they are, but it'd be nice if they could go anywhere and not have to put up with that shit. That'd be, that'd be a nice. The good but news I is they can agreed. visit us. So. I did get all the clamped. I did too. I cried. I don't cry. Well, I knew you would. So, Dave, well, do you want to read the answer or did you want me to read the answer and you chime in as comment. we go? I'd be afraid. Do what? He, 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 he made you do. make up that mind. I don't know what I really don't care. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna smart ass my way through it whether you read it or I read it. So that's true. You read it. You read it. Me? No, Dayton. That's what he's here oh. for. I don't know. What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the gang say? You're Dayton. Oh, you mean the chat room? Yeah, those people. The people who are your reason for being. I'm, well, I'm asking. True. They're still they're still commenting on me having to go. There, there's a 20 yeah. second Pictures delay. Of fried eggs. There's so a I fried egg know. talking on my screen. Baz says Dayton. Yes. Sunsail says Dayton. Sunsail Sunsail is the queen of gifts like that in our chat room. Talking and Matthew me. Anderson's the king. This is the kind of thing I hallucinate after drinking. Dayton. <laughs> They're chanting. So far, it's you. Okay. She, she right. hasn't put on the eyebrow guy yet for Dayton. Oh, my God. Can you see the chat room? <laughs> yeah, I can see it. That's why I'm like, oh, I, okay. really, Good. I need to really oh. reconsider how I spend my Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at Janice. Exclamation points at the yin yang for Dayton. Awesome. I'm going to have to right. her next time That's I see her. Bye-bye, dude. Uh-oh. Sunset left the conversation. Uh, no, that happens with out. her. She's got a bad connection somehow. He has a bad connection. Oh. We lose her frequently, unfortunately. Are you ready for? Are we ready to do this now? Is that, yes. We are ready. Let's do all this. Right. Well, that's what I said all day. Do you want me to ask the question and then you Yeah, you answer? ask the question and I'll answer. That sounds like a good one. Right. <laughs> Dear Dayton, number 100. Did you see who's here? 
No. Our special guest this week, none other than the man, the myth, the legend, author extraordinaire, just ask him, Dayton Ward. Up in here, up in here. He's delicious. The man is a sage. Dayton Ward is here. Hi, Dayton. Hello, Dayton. Hello, Newman. And Mark just handed him his complimentary gin and tonic for the GT show, so that's oh, always that's good. Oh, that's good. Firefly Vodka. See, if we knew he was coming, we would have taken him to the green room with the green women. God damn it, go read the ass, Dayton. Oh, Dayton. Oh, Dayton. Dayton Ward is Grumpy Cat. <laughs> Dayton Ward, troller of trolls. He's such a diva. Pay attention, ass Dayton fans. Everybody got their pad and pencil right? Yes, I'm ready. Would you like to be a part of the Ask Dayton experience? Send your questions to hosts at gntshow.com. Yeah! Dear Dayton, the 100th Ask Dayton question, if it's picked. Wow. Pretty awesome milestone. I thought you'd tell them to knock it off after about five of these. Anyway, you have been asked many questions about writing, but here's something I don't think you've ever been asked here. Nick and Terry were talking a few episodes ago about the twi- about Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey being, well, bad books. And it got me thinking, what book are you ashamed to have read? Also, can you give us a topic that you refuse to write about? Thanks so much and congratulations. I think. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the answer, finally, we are the 100 mark. Fuck me. No, I don't mean that in a recreational sense. What I'm saying is that my neurons are now to the point of misfiring at such regular intervals that I'm often incapable of speaking or even thinking in complete sentences. <laughs> According to the Universal Translator, that bit of fractured ruminating is actually supposed to have read, holy fuck, I can't fucking believe I've done a hundred of these fucking things. What the fuck was I thinking? Fuck me in the face with a blowtorch. I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with me. One hundred. Talk One hundred. of wasted time. <laughs> anyway, moving on, let's take a look at your first question. What book are you ashamed to have read? My answer. Anything <laughs> by Keith the Candidate. <laughs> I got to tell you, when I read that last night, I had to stop because my stomach hurt. I was laughing so hard. All right. Not really. I I can't honestly say that I've ever been ashamed of any book I've read because that would imply that I give the slightest bit of a diuretic taco shit so far as what other people think of my reading choices. A casual study of my home library should be enough to dissuade any such notions. I read what I want to read and fuck what anybody else thinks. On the other hand, I've definitely regretted some of my reading choices over the years, mostly in regards to the utter waste of time I spend reading a particular book along with the oxygen I consume while doing so. That's time I could have spent reading something else or smacking myself in the balls with a shovel. You know, something (laughs) less painful than enduring the rare, truly horrific book that crosses my path. That sort of thing doesn't happen that often, though, as I'm pretty particular about what I choose to read. And if a book's not going to do it for me after a couple of chapters, I just drop it in a box to donate somewhere and move on to something else. By the way, my mother says the same thing about every Star Trek book I've ever written. (laughs) You're probably noting at this point that I haven't offered up any actual titles that fall into this category. Well, don't look for any. I tend not to post bad book reviews. Think of it, I don't do that for good reviews either. Unless it's a friend's book that I'm being a biased dick of pimping out their stuff to whoever will listen. Getting too old to be wasting time ranting and raving about shit I don't like. That's why I always laugh and shake my head at the people who continue to bitch about some movie they hated from five years ago. Shut the fuck up already. Use that All energy right. for something productive, like smacking yourself in the balls with a shovel. You, you do realize you've just, you've just cut our entire premise of ragging on J.J. Actually, oh, but the, the thing about J.J. is he's always going to do something new that you can bitch about for a while. That's true. That's true. But that kind of completely, that completely, you know, negates our show. I realize I just took out one of the legs that supports the entire internet, (laughs) along with LOL cast. But we can all move on to another hobby. Now, to answer your second question, can you give us a topic that you refuse to write about? I don't think there's anything I'd call off limits. Sure, there are topics I don't particularly like writing about, or about which I don't consider myself informed to a point that I feel comfortable writing or speaking at length. And what you're thinking, Dayton, you'd be perfect for Fox News or CNN. You should have your own talk radio show. Still, given sufficient time to do the research and pondering in order to render my own opinion rather than spouting off someone else's prepared info nugget or talking point, I can't see there being any topic about which I'd refuse to write. So far as fiction goes, I don't think there are any genres I'd rule out either. I've done a variety of things already, and I'm willing to try just about anything at least once. Part part of being a writer is a willingness to move outside your comfort zones. I might even write my own really awful bondage porn novel one day, making a few million bucks from the horny soccer mom demographic and retire. Hell, it'd be the first thing I've written that my wife might actually want to read. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, there we have it, sports fans. Ask Dayton 100. I still can't believe this gag has lasted as long as it has, and it's been a truly bizarre yet fun journey to this point. If you had it to do over, I can hear someone shouting from the peanut gallery. Would you have said yes? Probably, but I sure as fuck ask for a shit more money. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, oh Dayton. Oh, my God. Thank you, Dayton. Thank you. Now I, I need to, you. like, tire and give this over to somebody else. Isn't it my turn to step aside now? No. <laughs> Oh. Are we going to reboot? Are we going to reboot Ask Dayton at number one now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, now we can go into syndication with it. Our, our, our odometer only only supports double digits. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like the, U, the Y2K bug, right? We can't do triple digits. Yes, we can't. We can't. <laughs> Star Trek bondage porn. There we go. Ask That's Dayton the new 52. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they started. They canceled Katana. They canceled Birds of Prey. Oh. I think I read somewhere where they've actually, if they haven't actually passed it by now, they were closing in on their 52nd cancel title under the new 50. Wow. <laughs> like, write your own joke right there. I don't understand oh my God. how. Thank you, Dayton. We miss you. Oh. I, okay, so I have along the uh, along the lines of the question that was just kind of asked of you. I mean, it one step further. I know that you talked about genres that you had. Is there any particular, I don't know. In, is there any particular subject that you actually thoroughly enjoyed researching more than you thought you would? Oh, yeah. All, all the time. I mean, the, I guess the most recent example would be the History Shadow Book, all that stuff I did about UFO mythology and lore and conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. I'm not a UFO conspiracy theory guy. I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, period. I mean, I'll read about right. it because it's interesting, but I don't believe any of that shit. Yeah. Right. And that was fun getting dealt because I was reading books like that were written in the 50s at the height of it mm -hmm. by people who were like, they would be the equivalent of your Glenn Becks and whatnot today. You know? <laughs> and they were, they were just as freaking paranoid about, you know, and, and coming up with these crazy ideas to explain this, that, or the other, as we are today about, you know, 9-11 truth or right. certificate bakers and all this other kind of crap, moon landing hoaxes. And people were just as fucked in the head as back then as they are now. There's just <laughs> have a bigger platform for their idiocy now. <laughs> yeah. Now they just have a bigger audience. I honestly, yeah. I, I, I would like to see, honestly, and I mean this, I would buy it in a second. If you wrote a Western. Yeah, I was just thinking. You know what? I've thought about that. I, I, it's one of the, I don't know. Westerns are kind of making a comeback. They're, yeah. but, and then there's also, there's a hybrid, you know, like there's, it's Western, but it's Western horror or Western science Western fiction. Western sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. I don't know where I want it. It's not steampunk. It's its own thing. I don't know what they call right. it. Try to carve it into this. Aliens drop. versus cowboys or whatever. Yeah, that stuff like that. But I mean, you know, like back, back in the day with the wild, wild west. I mean, that was, that was yeah. doing that back in the sixties and people are all gog about that now. I mean, that's basically Basically, steep. Yeah, they were doing yeah. It before it was cool. They were they were the hipster steampunk. And for the kids out there, we don't mean the, the horrifyingly bad Will Smith movie. That was just some underfunded fan film that got released. Yeah, I've <laughs> Such a disappointment. Oh, but yeah, I was a big fan of the actual TV show. But yeah, when it comes big to doing fan. that sort of research, I had to do a lot of reading for history outside what I would probably normally do, yeah. way outside the lines. And it was did fun. you find yourself getting stuck in like rabbit holes of oh my god, now oh, I'm I reading this and then go? It's like YouTube. I spent hours reading that stuff. I mean, books about Roswell and Project Blue Book and Majestic 12 and Area 51 and where the bodies are in Wright Patterson. Oh, I'm sure I mean, Fort Detrick came just, up in your reading. It's just crazy, man. I mean, and it, like I said, they are the same way that people today are about mm -hmm. the 9-11 truthers, birthers, and the moon hoaxers and all that. I mean, it's the same, same mentality. Moon hoaxers that. just – I did you see Buzz Aldrin punch that dude in the face? <laughs> yes. That, Buzz Aldrin, real American hero. Salute <laughs> <laughs> you, Mr. Moon Hoax Puncher in the face guy. Buzz Aldrin may be – the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> he may be. He may be. He's a good guy. I don't always walk on the moon, but what I do, I fucking walk on the moon. Yeah, exactly. I fucking walk on the moon. <laughs> um, and speaking yeah, of, yeah, I'm actually pondering a sequel or a follow-up to History Shadow. I'm thinking. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm, I went awesome. back into a trunk. I'm like, did I, did I keep all those books? I got rid of some of them, but I kept them really cool. Now, did you go on YouTube and watch any other crazy documentary shit? No, but I mean, you know, that's what the History Channel's great for because they don't actually put fucking history on there, but UFO and alien can see specials on yeah. it. I was recording a bunch of that stuff. I don't know how I've just now started finding this stuff, but the, the lizard people that are among us? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. I'm really frightened now because we're, we're, they've we're got me convinced. We're ruled by a cabal of lizard people. They've got people me convinced. 
Oh my god. <laughs> People who, should be, who who are off their meds, probably. Well, speaking of which, I got to tell you, Dayton, since you brought this up, I got a phone call in work this week. Now, for those that don't know, I work at an army installation. It's the army installation where we have the the. It's no secret the bio level four labs where they deal with Ebola and all of that, and it's the. Because that's what you want out in the public eye. The the research uh, Institute of Infectious (laughs) Diseases, which is working with, you know vaccinations for AIDS and Ebola and, and you know, to fight They're all that They're doing a lot of, of good work there. Yes. Well, I got a phone call this week. Ha <laughs> Deadpool. Got a phone call this week. Um, a woman called me and uh, we have a 21-year-old student trainee who works with us and she was on the phone for about five minutes and then she came to me and she said, I, I don't know how to handle this call. Actually, she went to the boss and she said, there's <laughs> a woman. You always want a great conversation and stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> she said, I can't get her off the phone and she's talking about about aliens and stuff and everybody turned and said let nick handle it (laughs) (laughs) well when i handle these calls i don't give them my name i i tell them that they're talking to peter north that's my (laughs) that's my name when i'm talking to about this but so i get on with her and she's telling me how in southwest kentucky which right there and in philadelphia pennsylvania there's high school kids who have the ability and they're making be- – first they're building aircraft that turn invisible as soon as they take off. So I'm thinking, okay, she's seen kids with like drones they've got off of Amazon or whatever. And okay, I'm going to listen to her and you know, and then tell her, no, man, Lisa. And they make beautiful people appear and then they rape them and kill them and put their bodies in the ground and grow children. Now at this point, she had my attention. Oh, it took this long? Oh, yeah. And then she's telling me how they can make buildings appear and disappear. And like every so often, the UFOs come and they take the children that these people have have raised from raping the beautiful people. And, and A they new definition of children on the corn? Yeah, oh. because aliens from an advanced civilization capable of interstellar flight are going to fly trillions of miles and hundreds of thousands of light years to fucking Kentucky. It, it gets better. <laughs> It gets better. <laughs> God damn it, Dayton. <laughs> You're welcome. So she – hey, don't pick on Kentucky. Ashley Judd's from Kentucky, and she's hot. But um, so – what? What? I've, I've been to Kentucky. I know. Hey, I went to basic <laughs> training at Fort Knox, and it was a lovely place. It was very pretty, but – Yeah. You know what's good to do in Kentucky? The fried chicken. Fuck out of there. Oh, Frank, yeah. But it's also Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Remember, she's telling me about these two places. So then I say, ma'am, this is Fort Detrick in Maryland. How did you get our <laughs> our number? And she says, <laughs> to get to Dayton's point, I was watching the History Channel. <laughs> and they were evidently talking about the, you know, the, the bio-level warfare shit. So, and, and so I called. So I said, okay. So now I, I say to her, well, I figured this will get, you know, do you have video or photos of this happening? And she says, and this is not a joke, she says this to me. No, I live in Hollywood and they talk to me through the radio waves. Yeah. So now I'm starting to hear radio waves by, by Roger and Waters in my head. Of her dealer. Yeah, by Roger <laughs> Waters. And I said, ma'am, what is it you would like us to do? And she says, I would like the army to come in with their tanks and to kill them because these are, are bad people doing bad things. So now she's she's got me. I'm hooked. I'm watching this show for all it's worth. And I say, <laughs> so is it just high schoolers? And she says, well, it's also seniors. So I said, so it's high school seniors? Because that's what I thought she said. And she says, no, like seniors, like older people. <laughs> this is like a mash of movies like yeah. Faculty and right. Village of the Damned and Cocoon and – and this the is like the normal the kind. Matchers. We get these conversations at work all the time because we deal with the the biological stuff, and you know, the, the, so people we get all the conspiracy theorists call us. So it, the phone call basically ended with me taking her name and and saying that I will let our local FBI office know, and that there will be a, a male and female agent coming to visit her <laughs> to get her her information, and that the the redheaded female is very lovely, so you'll know it's her. If I if I, if I worked there, my last day of work, I would change the like press one for zombie apocalypse, press two for vampire. <laughs> By the way, Matthew Anderson, I am stealing your picture of the predator at the playground. <laughs> Fair warning. Um, no, 
But That's awesome. Anyway, a hundred of these damn things. I don't know what we're gonna do for a for hundred. I'm I'm with the uh, the question asker. I still can't believe it. Yeah, I can't either. I'm, I mean, there was a while there where it was going, you know, at, at a really at a full head of steam and questions were all over the map in terms of we've done good questions, serious questions, and then we've done the ones that are like, you know, they're just trying to see action to get out of me, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I've been, I've actually been playing with the ones that I've written already. I mean, I've, I've been ordering them into categories like writing questions and fucking kidding me. <laughs> That kind of thing. And eventually, I would like to organize it and, and have like one download where everybody can get them all at one show. That would be awesome. Now that right I've got on. of them, I, I don't know that all of them will make it because some of them are kind of like up where we did all picks. One. <laughs> the all picks. That one, but you know, cause that's the other <laughs> stuff. Well, I am just th- thank you so much for you're just you're just such a you're such a trooper. I get a kick out of it. It's actually fun. I try to I just get the question like okay, I can answer it this way or I can answer it that way. I try to make a joke out of it if it's that kind of question. You know, well, it's kind of like well, I use it as a writing exercise actually. Excellent. And I mean, and, just like and a, I'm glad that you do. I think that's deadline. great. No, that makes me feel better because I'm like, well, at least he feels like he's getting something. Out of it. Now, tell us what's going on. What what announcements can you make? What projects are you working on? And we know you're working currently on Seekers. Working on actually, uh, the Seekers book is done. It's I, I, we we turned in our final edits for that a couple weeks ago. Excellent. I don't it. It'll be a book in a store, or I'll get my little box of copies ahead of that. Um, so, in fact, we're like what two months out from um, right now. From I'm working the on the next generation book. Yeah, the first Seekers book comes out at the end of July. Hot damn. Follow a month later. Yeah, we're can already you, June. So what the hell? Can you answer a question we we had last week? Hi. What's 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 with the band coming back together? <laughs> he can't say, can he? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't I don't get the it, I don't You get all the, were posting no. and Dave said we're getting the band back together. Oh that <laughs> all right. Oh I see. All right. Um Dave 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 uh, and I both landed uh a contract for another tie in license. Oh congratulations. Not Star Trek. Not Star Trek. Um, let's talk about what it is yet because contracts haven't been signed and Sweet. I can't tell you who it is or what it is or who we're working for but I, I think it's probably safe enough that Dave and I both are going to um, and it'll be separate. Uh, it's Twilight, isn't it? Yeah, it's, 50, <laughs> it's 51 and 52 shades of gray. Um, <laughs> well, congratulations. That's good news That's for you. That's awesome news. Wonderful. Congratulations. Actually, it, comes, it, it comes as a pretty good it – come, it came at the perfect time for me because I actually – last week ago Friday, I got told by my day job that I'm going to be rift by the end of the summer. Oh, no. So, so I'm like, oh, yeah, it's okay. Though I kind of knew it was coming, so I've been preparing for it. So I mean I've been tap dancing around that 10 years. But you just bought life. a house. Yeah, I'm cool. My wife is a financial wizard. We're good. She is right a, on. a lovely woman. Do you have the new but, Dayton cave? put together yet oh it's yeah it's all my layer my secret layer is here the big the, the giant penny is in one corner <laughs> sweet you have a giant penny so i'm i'm i've been lining up some extra work tie-in work that's awesome under a novel so i'm actually going to talk to an editor this summer about original science fiction back into that pool i'm going to have more time on my hands that's Excellent. awesome now nah, the day job pools i mean I'll, it'll be the end of the summer so i'll get paid through the summer and then i'll get a severance package it'll take me through the end i'm not worried about it okay i, t- I told my wife actually was it was her idea she was like why don't you just take the time and try to write full-time wow i'm okay Awesome we love life. her. So if I yes. can get the ball rolling and get the contracts lined up and get a steady stream of work coming in, I'm, I'm not in a hurry to run back to a cubicle. Awesome. Well, you know, we'll be here for you to pitch whatever it is you've got. It's, it'll be, it'll, I'm excited about the new, new gig. I wish we could talk about it because it's going to be fun. Oh, it sounds like but a they wanna make I, I had been approached before and I was like, well, I can do it after I do this book. Well, that's not the timing wasn't right down the road. Posted that in honor of Dave. Can't see Talking anybody. about. <laughs> see, we don't have to. I don't. These aren't. Those aren't Marines. Yeah, they are. <laughs> it's a digi cam. <laughs> we don't run toward the bullets. Back to. I never ran toward a bullet. By the way, <laughs> in our chat room, Sunsay All is drastically putting in different gifts to get your attention. She she's one of our regular cast of of crazies. She's in, insanely smart. There you oh, go. Oh, she, An air I, bass I, guitar solo. And uh, she was the one with the talking scrambled eggs or the pink fried eggs. That so, is yeah. correct. She's been, I've, I've known where she's at all along. Just an eye on her. <laughs> yeah, she's in Arkansas. <laughs> Speaking of crazy town. There you go. Uh, has she done the eyebrows yet this morning? There you go. Yes, uh, that's more like that's what I remember seeing. <laughs> that's what she has. Oh, that's uncalled for. <laughs> that's uncalled for. Painfully accurate, but uncalled for. That's a National <laughs> Guard. the safety belt that always kills me. Don't get me started on the PT belt, man. <laughs> Do not get me started. That was a sergeant major with a good idea. And you know the Marines have that, too. We have um, 
We had one back in my day when we would do formation runs. We had we call them road guards. I got you yeah. guys probably call them the same thing. And those yeah. guys wore vests or something to make them visible to traffic because they're the right. ones that run out and get in front of intersections to block traffic, so the rest of us could move through the intersection. But we all didn't wear one. Well, you know Not what happened? Everybody. Somewhere I mean, I on some base, somebody was running on their own, just you know, doing their own PT. Probably during the, the night. Dark and wearing black sweats or something. And got hit by a car, and therefore now everybody has to wear a PT belt for everything. <laughs> for everything. There you go. There's the eyebrows. <laughs> the, the, the tactical PT belt that doesn't yeah. glow in the dark when you're in, you're in a fire. I don't know how they cross the Delaware without their PT belt. <laughs> well, now, well, now somebody out there is Photoshopping that thing right now. But, um, I just oh, I they crack did. up. I, they, I crack up because there's all a I can Photoshop think of, of you of Omaha Beach where they're all wearing uh, PT belts. <laughs> that is so wrong, but so funny at the same time. I mean, I mean, I'm not laughing at the the Omaha Beach thing in terms of no. what went on there, but you're laughing yeah, I, at the idea. I'm laughing at the, the ridiculous. I mean, of it, yes. I was just like, okay, I get it when you're in a formation and you have road guards that have to block, you know, run blocker for the platoon. I get that, and I can almost see. I, I don't know. I, I see the Marines would have just been like, hey, dumbass, wear something light colored. That's why we give you yellow PT shirt or white PT or white shirt. Yeah. Well, the thing is, our PT shirts and our shorts have built-in reflective stuff already in them. I, you know, the only thing missing works. from you guys is a note clipped to your shirt that said, this is an army soldier. If found, please return to oh, like on the back, yeah, yeah, it has a reflective thing built in, and on the, the shorts in the front, the word army is reflective. You can see it's they're plain as day. But no, Sergeant Major didn't think that was enough. Oh, and here's the real joke. I had yeah, That was my phone, by the way. Um, there, the, the, in Iraq, I had to yell at a sergeant major who was yelling at a troop at 2.30 in the morning because he didn't have his PT belt to walk to the pisser trailer. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> so I said, sorry, major, you have a wet shoe. For those that don't know, a wet shoe is his living quarters had a toilet in it. I was like, why are you over here at 2.30 in the morning stalking privates going to the bathroom? Seems like yeah. you have much bigger issues than PT belts. So I had to stand in front of in the, the division In the civilian world, you'd be called a peeping Tom. I, I literally had to stand in front of the division sergeant major the next morning and explain. And then he looked at the other sergeant major and said, why were you over there at 2.30 in the morning? <laughs> checking, out the, checking out the women. Well, third ID did have some. Anyway, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I, we've all – I've had my stories where we get – when I was stationed overseas, we had a – I was a, a sergeant at five and below barracks. One night on a Friday night, this sergeant showed up, E7, three – um. Goes up at our barracks because he didn't like our field day inspection. You know, our rooms weren't clean. Had us all refield day Friday night to be re Saturday morning. One of the things that we got gigged on in my room, me and my roommates, we had a fan up on one of the bookcases that didn't have a face cage, active cages or whatever, and there was dust in all the blades. Oh my god! That's how thick it was. So without doing, without we didn't clean anything else in our room that night. I just wrote in the dust on the fan blades, "See Saturday," and walked out to the E Club. We were nice. Standing, we were standing tall in front of our our NCOIC on Monday. I, raised a complaint and his first question was to the gunny what the fuck are you doing in the barracks on a friday night don't you have anything better to do <laughs> i i got written up at fort gordon which i hated it there because i knew that they were coming through for an inspection and i left a milk and cookies out for them and with a note <laughs> that said that said take as many as you want Dude, for those I, yeah. for those of our audience that may ever join the military, when you have a room inspection coming up, the best way to to get them to not notice your room, just leave a, a Playboy or a Hustler or something out. They'll flip through that and then and then leave the room. Or I, I I used to have um, I was visiting my parents and I had brought back my Star Wars sheets and blankets <laughs> from when I was a kid and put yeah, those on the bed. That. Yeah, I did that. We did. I, we had the um, the uniform wall locker inspection, you know, where you have to open up your wall lockers and all oh, your yeah. crap has to be laid Everything's out. Everything's got to be two fingers Everything's apart. Everything's got to be just the right length of measurement apart and all that crap and everything has to be ironed and labeled and whatever. And I, I went out to a costume shop and I rented a gorilla suit and I hung it in his wall locker. <laughs> <laughs> left it there. <laughs> of course, we both got screwed over on that deal because the person doing the inspection had no sense. None. When I and I first... replaced one. Yeah, replaced all his underwear with stuff from Spencer Gifts with like thongs with lightning bolts and leopard skin. <laughs> and they were all glow in the dark. I'm sure. Yeah, and the best part was our inspecting officer was a woman. Not impressed nice. with us at all. Now, what you guys call it AIT, right, or A school? What? If you mean for your for your MOS, your, yeah. your, your, your yeah, we call it uh, just. Uh, 
occupied near my school. Yeah. When, when I went to that, I, it was in Indianapolis, Indiana at Fort Ben Harrison, and it was uh, defense information, so there were all four services. But yeah, my, I've my, been there. I know that guy. I know that place. It, it, yeah, it, it was a really cool place. Um, my first week there, uh, public affairs school was really different because we didn't have drill sergeants because they, they treated us like adults. Um, well, let me rescind that. They treated us for like adults for a while because like the first week I was there and they were doing the bed check, the very first night I was there, the, the platoon sergeant knocked on the door to make sure everybody was in and my new roommates were reading me a bedtime story. <laughs> and then the next night he knocked on the door and we all came out of the wall lockers that were in the wall because there were three of us in the room and we did the hello 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 <laughs> hello and then we finally were told to knock it off when we had the door locked and we did the who is it yeah. i'm sorry it's I don't the plumber it. i can fix the sink yeah, we, we, we opened a fucking door, right? Fucking that. So we, we were told I went, to stop. Went to a, when I got promoted to staff sergeant, I, got, I went to a staff NCO academy in Quantico, where y'all, you know, it's like a leadership class. When you truckers on the first day we were there, we were yelling at us like we were boot, boot camp all over again. Every one of us were looking at each other like, are you fucking kidding? They're yelling at us like we're first day Paris Island, you know? And I mean, I mean I'm a married. Most of the guys are married. Some of them got kids. And I'm like, nobody was putting up with that shit. So we did the same thing. We would rebel at every opportunity until the instructor finally said, <laughs> Yeah, we there's no call for that. They would have curfews and bed check and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, we got guys who were like Gulf War one bed. I was going to say, you, know, you one, got combat you veterans. Know, and yeah, yeah, and I'm like, one guy has a silver star, and they, they were giving him shit about the silver star. And he was one of the most soft-spoken guys. I, I, I knew he was, he was with me. He and I were gone out together to the class. And he was one of the most soft-spoken, laid-back, humble individuals you ever meet. Huh. Never talk about what what he did to earn the silver star or anything like that. So they were grilling him. He saw it, and it was in his record. And they you know, they were taking him a task. Well, how did you get? Did you earn? It? There's no way you could have earned that. And of course, he would say shit like, "I sold the most cookies," <laughs> and it would just it would just drive them completely insane because they whatever they would do, whatever that however far they would yell, just wouldn't phase him. He wouldn't even the yeah. the, 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 the more he resisted passively, the louder they got. It was hysterical. I, I actually had to go out of the room because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Well, my my uncle was the same way. I the only reason I found out how he got his was because I <laughs> fucking looked it up. I yeah, I didn't go. know either. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I, just, I didn't know until I went to his house one night for a barbecue, and the citation was on the wall, and I read about it. And you know, it's like triple A badass the citation. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dave, uh, you, you'll appreciate that our NCO school used to be called PLDC, Primary Leadership Development. Yeah. Uh, when I went through, and the very first day. Uh, our instructor walked in. Now this is after the PT test, and those people were weeded out, you know, that kind of thing. And we're sitting in the classroom, and everybody's nervous because you know this is for to go for E4 to E5. So this was the, uh, the major, you know, pinning on the hard stripes is such a major deal. And uh, the instructor walks in, and he's got his coffee cup, and he takes a long pull from it, <laughs> and he looks at us, and he says, "You've just had your first lesson in being an NCO, drinking the coffee." <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, well played. Because that's how you can always tell the NCO they're the one with the coffee cup. Well, before Dayton leaves and before we have to tie things up, I want to go over a real quick. Uh, sorry to interrupt, guys, but I want to go <laughs> over a real quick time. update for yeah. the Star Trek Con. Shall we just start right off the bat with a um, Las Vegas update? Or is, are we still talking Vegas, right? Uh, we are. Oh Vegas. yes, you're coming to Vegas, right? Star Trek Las Vegas may take place every August, but on this show, <laughs> this is where we hang out the rest of the year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> The crew has been fatigued now from so many months in space And they need to take a break The landing party has been down to check out the terrain While the crew gets ready to play They say there's only plant life living on this lovely rock But a rodent up here's wearing a vest Now Dayton, you're going to be at shore leave this year, correct? Yes and that's two months from be today. August. What's, yeah, two months from today. Which means August 1st Star Trek 3rd. Las Vegas is less than two months from today. In the same two weekend. From, yeah. Two months from today is, is a Thursday. But August or August 1st is a Thursday. That's when we fly. Well, you guys will already be there because it starts on Wednesday. We'll be there like Tuesday night, Vegas. Yeah, we're getting there yeah. Tuesday night. We're getting there Tuesday night. Janice and I are flying to uh, Terry's on Saturday, the 26th. And the Albuquerque to Vegas The Ferris Caravan. Anomaly. The Ferris Anomaly will be joining us again. <laughs> 
and uh, we'll be heading out on Tuesday. We get there Tuesday, Wednesday, we set up the booth, and then the con starts on Thursday. Well, actually, they're doing the big preview night on Wednesday nights now. So. Oh, that's right. What's pre- is it just they open the dealer's room? and Yeah. What is I mean, you can go in and buy stuff, but it's just the, the all-weekend passes can get in there early? Yep. Yeah, exactly. That works? That's, how it, well, that's exactly how it works. So then uh, the Wednesday night, Thursday through Sunday, and that's going to be the same weekend you are going to be at Shore Leave, which, of course, is in Baltimore, Baltimore. correct? Yeah, we're going the other way. I haven't, well, I haven't been to Shore Leave in a couple of years, so back there. I don't, well, it sounds like my- a lot of fun because you guys are going to be you know doing a Seekers panel, are you? Well, not? I mean that, and I don't get to see um, – Friends that are on the East Coast. This is, this is this one is very heavily attended by Trek lit folks. So right, well, so in fact, much fun. It's it is yeah. Nick can tell you it's fun. So guys, can well, out there check it out. We've made the, Which we the ju- we've made the decision, Dayton. All three of us were pretty unanimous on this one. Uh, if they do this again with Vegas next year, yeah, we're we're talking shore leave. Yeah, it is true. So we will. We will see. We take a break. Can you imagine from Vegas. If it's going to be the same weekend, well, I mean, we'll the, take a the break. The size from Vegas. of the conventions are not even comparable. I mean, Shore Leave is a small. No, but Shore Leave is more, more our intimate. people. It's our people. More, yeah. Our people. <laughs> and plus, can you imagine GNT with a booth in that vendor's room? You, <laughs> no, I don't know if they'd have room for you in there. They'd have I know we'd have to be on a wall down on the first on the in the basement area. <laughs> they'd have to put you down on that room outside the main events auditoriums. You know? Yeah, exactly. But I don't know if we'd get the internet signal down there. Uh, it's there's a well, there's all there's those bay windows that are right there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, I, look, see if you look at the chat room. This is Sun Sail when she's she's bored with what we're talking about. <laughs> well, oh my kids. I know, I know. Well, to, to bring everybody up to speed, several new people have been announced for the uh, Las Vegas convention. Uh, so you can head over to creationent.com and then head over to the – Yes, or the other um, Yeah, they, they added six or seven people. How uh, many of them Including, including Manny Cotto. Uh, see, I would well, I would go to a panel to listen to him talk, the writers and the people behind the scenes. I, I've Me seen too. all the actors and I've heard all their stories. And uh, I, would, I, would, I would listen to a panel with the writing staff. Like and I've never seen Manny. Nor have I. I. So I think it's going to be yeah. He there, he's going to be doing a panel with Brandon Braga, and it should be kind of interesting. I'm sure they're going to get grilled about Enterprise. We're going to but, talk yeah. about the show. We're going to fuck here. I mean, oh, was that <laughs> was that allowed? I'm sorry. No, I mean Braga takes a lot of unfair heat. I just yes. said today that we I agree. sent a letter to the Vatican absolving him of his sins. <laughs> and because and, like and Nick will be happy. And Nick will be happy. Admiral Nechev will be there. Nikulich has announced. So yay, she's awesome. She is. Um, but also, uh, uh, last week we talked a little bit about the forty-five piece orchestra. They're doing the Nevada Pops is is going to be doing a, a concert, a live concert there. They're also going oh. to be doing yeah. yeah. It's going to be speaking great. Of music. I know that the I know that the band um, fi- uh, uh, Five Year Mission. And, they're and showing Five up. Year Mission has yeah. been tagged to be the official. Concert band, band of the, the convention. Whatever band, yeah, venue band or whatever they're calling it, cantina band or whatever they're calling it. Which I'm loving. That's great. And we cool. love Five Year Mission. We're glad for Mike and the, and the gang. Uh, Michael Westmore is going to be doing a live um, makeup demonstration with Terry Farrell. He's going to. Oh, very cool. Do What's her, he going to do? He, he's going to. He goes, Make her ugly? Mr. Westmore transforms Terry live on stage into Dax for the 239th time. The, First time in public. I like I just want to know the spots go all the way down. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a uh, cosplay focus day, which of course will be Saturday. Uh, Is McKenzie going to be there? I'm sorry? I don't know. And uh, they've got a couple of announcements here on the side, which I don't know what they really mean. But one is the Garrick (laughs) Tailor and Repair, which will be a service for cosplay population. Oh, yeah. yeah, That's going to be for people who are having... Troubles. Like a lounge the, area for the cosplayers to kind of get away from it all and take a break. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. And with or materials they, and all of that. Yeah, if repairs. something breaks or or you know snaps off and they need right. to super glue it back together, they have that and they can sit down. And, like if they're wearing stuff, it's heavy. Like you know, like for general cons, you know, guys walk around in Iron Man costumes. That's well, well, and I then have the last one, one thing Quartz from Heroes bar. of Cosplay, it's that th- they do have a lot of issues and they get winded really quick. The people that are the hardcore, you know, making Galactus costumes type of thing. Yeah, we see that at Starf. These guys really go nuts for the costume, especially the guys that are the folks that are competing. I mean, they don't. There's not. A, it's not a money thing like at some of these. That's the thing I didn't know about. I didn't know about the money prizes at some of these. I had no idea there was that whole subset. Yeah, like three thousand dollars for first yeah, place. Yeah, I guess so. Apparently, there are people who just travel from con to con competing in the contest, and I guess that's where they milk the drama. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's Speaking cool. of drama, I have to tell you all, I started playing on my Xbox, the Lego Indiana Jones. If you don't have it for your console, get it. Isn't it fun? Oh my Isn't god. It fun? I love the Lego games. The Lego games are really fun. All right. Well, Dayton, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And thank you so much for 100 contributions. Yeah, you're you're great. We'll we'll, we'll talk. (laughs) Thank you again. Anything we can do, I wish. And um, there's an extra case of Firefly vodka on the way. That is true. My liver calls you out, man. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, for those of us who will be back actually a week after next it sounds like we're going to take a break next week and maybe even and, and we'll see how it goes uh, everybody keep good thoughts for our friend Mike who's going to be having some surgery next week yeah. yes hopefully I'll be able to walk afterward I'm just hoping that I can still walk but we'll see not taking your laptop <laughs> Well, and I have Army Reserve next week, too, so. He has shooty time. And well, Mike is going to be in recovery for a while, so. Don't forget your uh, PT belt, bro. Yeah. Alan no, and we're I going to the Pentagon, so I'm not taking it. I'm going to live on the edge. <laughs> Alan and I are going to get trained on how to broadcast this damn show, so Mike can at least rest appropriately. Speaking of which, I'll, I'll, I'll say this publicly. Um, as soon as, since I've submitted my retirement paperwork date, and as soon as I give the date, get the date, you'll get an invite, even though I know you won't show up <laughs> for, for my retirement from uniform. Congratulations, dude. 20, 26 years of my life, and I'm not going to know what to do now because as when much you, as I. are you aiming to party? Uh, hopefully, it comes through before August, so, but it, I, I could push the party to the fall. Oui. But I, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to be that guy that. When I see something on TV going on, I'll be like, maybe I should re-up one more time, even though my <laughs> knees will fall off my body if I do. Um, and, and one more announcement. One more announcement. Book club was yes, recorded. Yes, because Steve's very subtle. <laughs> wow. It was recorded. Nobody talks and- about book club. That's the first thing I can think of when I see that font. First rule of book club. We don't talk about book club. We do talk <laughs> about book club. And, it, and we, 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 we actually recorded our book club. We kind of talked about the first book of the Time 2 series. Yeah. A Time Which, to Be Born. Wasn't, I, wasn't the Time 2 series your and Kevin's first published novel for Star Trek? That was our first novel collaboration was yeah. that. that. God, that was 10 years ago. Yeah, um, it was. That's why we first talked about it. Was, first thing we did together was – the first thing we actually did together was a magazine article for Old Communicator. Our oh, first cool. fiction was SCE, early SCE, back in 2001. Hey, Terry, Mike, did you watch the video I put up on the G&T show of, of Neil Gaiman talking about digital? Yes. Because we were supposed to talk about that. Maybe we could start a discussion for on, on our page because oh. I thought there was a lot of really interesting things that he said. I think that's a good idea. And, and, All and right. nobody says, be a dandelion like he does. <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, he's talking about uh, the digital day, about how, you know, when he was in a punk rock band and you had to join the union to play, <laughs> they stuck oh, the yeah. sticker on in 1976 <laughs> that said, you know, home taping is killing music. And now you flash forward all this time and they're saying, you know, digital is killing the books. And, you know, you got to go with the flow and to be a dandelion, come up with new ideas, spread, spread them out, put, send, <laughs> spread your seeds and see how many plant. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know the digital books. I don't I definitely change Books aren't okay. going anywhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. You see. That's what we talked about last week. I mean, there's, I don't think print's going to go anywhere too fast and not going to go anywhere. It's, it, it, yeah, people who read are going to put their devices, but still not the majority of book sales. Yep. We're a ways away. And there's always going to be books that don't work. On a, I don't, exactly. I'm not going to buy a coffee table book to read on my iPhone. Right. Exactly. Uh, right. The, the stellar cartography book does not work on an e-book. Right. And the yeah. Klingon Art of War certainly would not. I'm just saying. Why no, not? but I mean, for casual reader, I mean, you know, it's, hey, they're reading. Oh, that's I'm true. Bitch about the Way format. to pimp Keith's I, shit I, while Dayton's on. That's a good book. You did a good job on that. Well, I'm that waiting was, for Dayton's art book. I don't know. Oh, I don't no, know if he not. told you. Did he, you guys had an interview with him? But I don't know if he told you that. You know, they 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 approached me about that gig, and I couldn't do it. I I, I was under yes. for a different project. I had to pass, so I recommended Keith. Yes, for the Klingon did, Art of War. Yeah. yeah, he mentioned that during the interview. That was cool. Can you, can you do the Romulan Art of War? That would be. I don't know. I mean, I haven't. I don't know what that company's doing. That would guys. be a really cool thing, like the Cardassian art of war, the Romulan art of war, the Vulcan art of war. Just the different philosophies and stuff. I don't know if it'd be too repetitive. I mean, well, it no, wouldn't I, have to be the art of war, but their philosophies. Right. Yeah, yeah, something. I mean, I, I, bad hair. The Kinshara for the Vulcan. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Vulcan cosmetological once you Bible. Get, once you get past the Klingons <laughs> and the Romulans and How to argue like Andy, a Tellarite. Yeah, once you get past the Klingons, Romulans, Vulcans, the, not the everybody really cares about them. The Tellarite book of debating. Oh, I like that. The Tellarite, yeah, right? the Tellarite rules of etiquette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be the uh, the, the, the Ferengi rules of etiquette? No, yeah, that's the rules of etiquette. I want to really do that. I want to do the illustrated Betazoid wedding manual. <laughs> oh, I like it. Very good. Very it's good. A, <laughs> no, I mean, um, the, the the company that put that book out, I don't know if their original license was for five Star Trek books. That Mark have renegotiated. Yes, <laughs> uh, it'd be cool to do something fun like that because apparently he had a lot of fun with it. I can imagine he did. Oh, it's it's very cool. It's a that very great. Cool it's a beautiful book. book. Oh, it is, of, and that's the and that's the other thing. It's just the quality of the. Of the production of it is beautiful. Like everything else they've done, too. All the way back to the, the Federation book as well as the um, star charts. I'm on I'm serious, you guys. I love you. But we have to tie the show I got to go. I got to get my kids anyway. Okay, cool. Thank, thank you, you for, joining for joining us. us. Yes, Congratulations thank you, on number 100. And everybody so, well, join us. is not in... next week. No. <laughs> there is... Okay, cool. No show next week, and we'll pick back up as soon as Alan and I figure out how to broadcast the sucker. We love you, and join us back for episode 156 on June 15th, Father's Day. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless. Joe Luntrow. Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp 11, Grethor, Five-Year Mission, and Andrew Allen's Smooth Federation. GNT show is a busy little beaver production. Gonna take a five-year tour Boldly go where no man's gone before Gonna travel to the end And make new friends Move ahead, walk back to ten Put a mini skirt on Zero G